The SMB Cup Series is ready to salute on this Wednesday night Veterans Day to our fallen veterans. The drivers are set to go here at the short track that is nestled in the Commonwealth of Virginia, virtually the Martinsville Speedway. This evening, we are ready to go for 250 laps, 125 miles for the Veterans Day 250. Coverage presented by SWAG, and it's on LSR TV and CRN Sports. Good evening, I'm Wesley Outland. Greg Rance is alongside. And joining the production chair, as always, is Mr. Charles Wooten. Greg, Martinsville Speedway, always a unique, exciting half-mile pavement slash concrete track. This should be a great race here this evening. Looking forward to this one, Wesley. 250 laps the distance here tonight for the SNB Cup Series. The Veterans Day 250 coming up here with the SNB Cup Series. It's been a spectacular season thus far. We've seen four different winners in our four races thus far. Looking to see if we can get a fifth different one here this season. We'll see how it goes. 250 laps. Will we have our fifth winner in five races or will we see our first repeat winner of the season. Yeah, uh, real quickly, again, looking at our race information presented by Race on Texas, the 30-minute practice session just about to wrap up here in mere minutes. Two-lap qualifying, the two-lap qualifying will then set the stage for the 250-lap race, 125 miles around the night track that is Martinsville Speedway. Real quickly, let's take a look at your race conditions presented by SawBlade.com. Uh, track conditions, temperature ambient outside is 69 degrees. Two mile per hour wind speed. Track temperature just a couple of degrees warmer than the re than the regular ambient temperature at 71. Virtually partly cloudy skies. This should be a good race. You got to remember we're racing under the lights at night. It's nighttime already, so we shouldn't have a problem with that, Greg. No, it should not be a problem with track temperature as opposed to some of the other races we've seen here on LSR TV this weekend. So looking forward to seeing that. What I am curious about, though, is what will the setup do? Because we've seen on this track, not exactly similar, but kind of, sort of, with the flat banking. We saw at New Hampshire the setup issues coming into play early and often, and I'm wondering if we will see a repeat of that here tonight, or will they be able to click laps away and uh, try to get this thing done quickly here in this one. 250 laps is a long way, so we'll see how it goes here in this one, especially the early stages. Yeah, the drivers of the... SB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters are ready to go. We'll qualify when we return. Back with more from Martinsville in a moment. ETE Reman is the world's best remanufacturer of transmissions for import and domestic cars and trucks. Based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, our customers are repair shops, auto parts stores, dealerships, and distributors. And with six nationwide warehouses, we're where and when you need us. So when you're looking for a transmission that is like new, only better, instill confidence and install ETE Remit. here at the Martinsville Speedway getting ready to go with qualifying here in just a couple moments for the drivers of the SNB Cup Series as they get ready for the thank you to the veterans 250 and uh, before we go any further we do want to thank our veterans we want to tell them thank you so much for their services those that are uh, have have fallen and died men and women and those that have continue to uh, fight and serve for our country today especially during the craziness that we live in right now thank you thank Thank you for them. Uh, we sleep better at night, Greg, knowing that there are men and women that are protected and serving our country to make sure that we have the freedoms that we are allowed to do. Absolutely. The reason we are able to do this right now is because of what the brave men and women all over the world have done for us. And tonight's race is in honor of them. As you look at Will Duvall out there practicing right now, Ross Tatum in the quick time right now, as Duvall loops it on his second qualifying lap. So that will negate that one. The 19.902 will be the lap that counts for Duvall as we pick up Brockton Packard for Shadow Racing in the number 24. Whoa. And he's going to feature more of the same here as he backs in into the outside wall there on what I believe is his first lap, so he'll get a chance to reset. Still Ross Tatum at the top of the board right now, Wesley. 
You have some of these drivers that will have special paint schemes in observance of Veterans Day for the uh, the Veterans Day. Thank you, Veterans 250. We'll talk about that along the way. But right now, Ross Tatum at the top of the board. 19-349 to a 19-411 set by Jack Ely. Duncan now third. And here's Robbie Helms in the number 18 machine. Now working his way around the racetrack. We'll see what kind of a lap he puts down, Greg, around the short track. That is Martinsville. First lap on the board is a 19.641 here for Helms. Looks like that's going to put him mid pack here in this one. And right about eighth on the boards. Tatum on top of the 13 or 19.349 here so far. So Robbie's going to need about three tenths of a second to go after that. He picks up eight tenths into a 5.36. And that does not, unfortunately, move him up any positions in the. Uh, score chart 18 cars have in time thus far a handful of drivers still to go including Tyler Stukesbury Spencer Hardison and others there is Stukesbury but there's Evan Coleman he's running a starburst entry here tonight he's probably uh, still representing Halloween there a little bit and uh, probably had quite a few starbursts left over so it's like well why not might as well uh Throw the Starburst logo on and give them some publicity as they always, always like Starburst it. candy. Always like Starburst candy. Juicy, yes. Juicy candy. <laughs> yeah, our producers in the background. <laughs> Toyota Camry of Evan Coleman, number 51. That's a sharp-looking paint job on that car, too. The it is. Job. I, really I like enjoy it. it. I like it in the number 51. Kind of like a, uh, a retro throwback to Joe Logano's colors of the day a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Tatum on top of the board with Ely second. Duncan Sherwood and Braxton DeWeese top five. As you look at Tyler Stukesbury, who's been on the front row the last two races here, Wesley. See if he can continue that streak. Braxton DeWeese was also on that streak. That's going to end here tonight as he qualifies fifth we'll see what tyler stukesbury has up his sleeve 14 or, or 19 4, 6, 6, good enough for fifth right now so in the ballpark of trying to be able to strike there see if he can leap frog up onto the front row he's gonna need a little bit more no he's actually slower so the streak will end at two there for Stukesbury as well. Ross Tatum on the pole as of now. Watching these drivers working their way back down the front straight away. And right now, Ross Tatum, the fast man. Ely in second. There goes the 19 of Styler, Tyler Stukesbury finishing up with his qualifying lap. Number 19. Looks like we've got a couple of more entries that have not took time. Pillsbury, Jacob Grant has not took time. And neither has Zachary Stone. And looks like the field might be set and qualifying is officially done. Oh, yeah, we're ready. It's time to introduce the starting lineup as these drivers get ready to go. ComServe Wireless starting grid. Fast qualifier, Ross Tatum in the number one. He'll be the man to leave him to the green flag to the outside of row one. Jack Ely in 54, probably his best start in a while. Row number two is going to find Zach Duncan in the 80. Rob Sherwood in the 29. He'll start fourth. It's the third straight week that Tyler Stukesbury and Braxton DeWeese start on the same road. This time, row number three, fifth and sixth for the high five teammates. Evan Coleman and Spencer Hardison, two more drivers from the Adrenaline Night Racing League, make up row four, seventh and eighth. Row number five will find Jonathan Woods in the number 10. Cody Terry to his outside of the 22. Row number six, top 12. Roby Helms in the 18. Christian Gardner in the seven. We're going to find Cody Furnett, one of those drivers that we've been keeping an eye on lately. Daytona winner Joshua Altus starts in 14th. You find Caleb Smith from CEM Motorsports alongside New Hampshire winner Tucker Wingo. Brennerberg 9 is going to find Zachary Peterson of the 96 to the outside. Brockton Packard in car number 24. Round out the top 20. Matthew Gilliams in 28. Kenan Massey will be in the number 4. One thumb wonder, the Cowboy, Will Duvall in the number 32 with Joey Beasley to his outside were the final two cars to qualify here for this evening. Jacob Grant and Zachary Stone round out the 24 car field. They took provisionals. On so that is the starting cars. lineup. Yes, sir. 24 drivers. There it is. The starting lineup for tonight's event here. We, we knocked out the starting lineup quicker than they uh, rolled the grid. So we're ready here. Going to get two laps before they turn them loose. This is a half mile track. 
black mix of concrete and pavement. You see the concrete down below the corners, pavement on the straightaways, and uh, that's going to really make things different for this race here once we get going, Greg. Yeah, going to make it very, very unique to see how it goes. We still haven't gotten quite a good grip of what Martinsville's like under the lights here. We've only seen a couple races in real life here under the lights at this racetrack. So we still are waiting to see what will happen for these drivers as this race unfolds. The lights are going to go out on the pace car this time by, which means we're going to see the green flag fall. And these drivers are going to turn loose for 250 laps track temperature has gone down another degree now 70 degrees at time of green flag so wesley we'll see how much grip is in the t in the track as we start this race off want to let you know that uh for those that are joining us on the lsir tv or crn broadcast that uh, we are aware of the youtube issues that they've had if there is an instance that that does take place again we will immediately change over and we will give you the link to go to our facebook feed as we are simulcasting pace car is in for our veterans thank you for your surface green in the air only fitting a usa car brings them to the green ladies and gentlemen you have a virtual race wednesday night veterans day we're underway at martinsville And just like that, Jack Ely will jump up to the lead. The USA Coca-Cola number one of Ross Tatum will fall back to second. Duncan Sherwood, Stooksbury right there in that middle mix as we're underway. Greg in the opening lap. Sherwood kind of hung out to dry right now here in the early stages in his number 29 car trying to get down to the bottom. He might have an opportunity here if Stooksbury can get by before Deweese gets his nose and he does not. As Sherwood actually got a run on the outside, we have a battle brewing for the race lead as pole sitter Ross Tatum wants to lead back here after Ely led the first two laps. That inside lane, the preferred one here, and Ross Tatum to the lead. Has to come across the line to get official credit, though. 250 laps, 125 miles the distance here for this uh, Thank You Veterans 250 as we are underway. Down in the turn number one and two, you see Ross Tatum leading the way. Duncan falling back to second. Here comes a battle between Stooksbury. Ely, who led some of the opening laps, he'll fall back now to fourth as they exit off turn four. Ely trying to recover now under pressure from DeWeese in the number 15. Stooksbury already up two spots after starting fifth up to third right now. Looks like the biggest mover of the race so far. We see a few drivers up three. Josh Altus, Tyler Stooksbury, Will Duvall are among those drivers who have advanced three positions. The biggest loser thus far is Robbie Helms. He has fallen outside the top 15 after starting 11th. Back in the turn number one and two, Tatum, Duncan, Stooksbury, Ely, and DeWeese are your top five. Speaking of DeWeese, a U.S. Navy colors on the number 15 machine. Here's a little more information about Braxton DeWeese and what kind of car he is driving right now. He's driving the number 15, honoring his uncle Matthew DeWeese that served in the Navy for 24 years. At one point, he was ranked fourth in charge of an aircraft carrier. He passed away on February 10th, 2011. So the honor there for the DeWeese family on the Navy number 15. And there's a whole bunch of other drivers and their paint schemes in honor of Veterans Day today. We've got a caution of the Speedway first one of the afternoon. And it's Will Duvall, the one thumb wonder for Outlaw Esports in the number B32 at a Mannington, West Virginia. Here is your swag, E-Raps and Graphics Division instant replay, Greg. What happened to the ball? And just got loose and it broke loose on him. It triggers a caution immediately. We saw that out of him in qualifying in almost the same spot. Actually, it was a little bit further right around here that he spun out in qualifying. But again, the setup looking a little loose here on the short run. But under caution here quickly, we were able to click off eight laps before the green or the caution flag fell in that one. Under caution for the first time tonight. 
NPR here reports that yes, the drivers were all talking about the looseness of the setup, and that Wesley reminds me a lot of what we saw at New Hampshire, and you remember what we saw at New Hampshire as well, a record setting 23 caution flags, and with a similar setup on the track with similar banking, uh, that bodes is kind of a bad omen, but hopefully the cooler track temp does help uh, combat that. So the caution coming out here. You see Ross Tatum and Duncan leading the field behind the toe of the pace car. And we're in the early going. I don't think anybody's going to come to the pit lane. Quick break. When we come back, more from Martinsville. Happy Veterans Day to you. Hey, it's Wesley Outland of CRN Sports, one of the co-founders. I'm also one of the announcers on Live Sim Racing, LSR TV. We've recently partnered with LiveSimRacing.com to become the official radio partner of all of the esports events. What is CRN? Well, first off, we're going to be covering esports like it's never been done before with our MRN, PRN type radio atmosphere like you experience with NASCAR. In addition to that, we will cover the Northwest Truck and Cup Series, the Northwest Tour, and of course, special events and sanctions like swag and special events like six hours at Daytona and so much more. It's very simple to check out the racing action, whether on LSR TV, on Facebook and YouTube, or by listening. And that's how I want to help you real quickly. Go up simply to the website, wearecrn.com, wearecrn.com. Click play, and you are set. It's that simple. We're excited to be the voice of live sim racing. We are CRN. Follow us at CRN.com. Pace car is in. Here comes the field out of turn number four. After you see my ugly mug on the commercial break, Green go back in the air. Tatum caught everyone asleep at the wheel, Greg. Wow. He learned what not to do on that initial restart as Jack Ewey beat him on that initial restart. He is not backing down as he is out to the front early, but he's got Tyler Stukesbury behind him in that loose in or tight in loose off podcast car right behind him. He's still sporting his throwback colors from last week when he paid tribute to Dale Sr. And here he is rolling in second right now, going after Ross Tatum. Meanwhile, behind that, the first side-by-side -side battle is between Evan Coleman in the 51 and Rob Sherwood in the 29. This is for sixth on the racetrack. Cross the line, Ross Tatum, he'll lead the lap. Stukesbury in second, Duncan third. Ely, DeWeese right now, those cars in the top five. As they hit the back straightaway into turn number three. Tatum and Stukesbury right there with one another. Here they come, working off a of turn four, back across the stripe. As we are underway here in the salute to the veterans, 250 here at Martinsville. By the way, uh, DeWeese was, uh, the, uh, the driver DeWeese was, Braxton DeWeese was the winner of the cash prize last week. So... And uh, we are in race number five of 16 tonight. Four races in. By the way, Joshua Altus is the man that's leading the way. Altus in the number 94. Tucker Wingo is second. Spencer Hardis in third. Matthew Gilliams. Four different winners. Four different races. Uh, again, Greg, you win. You advance to the playoffs. Right now, Jack Ely, Jacob Grant, Caleb Smith, Ross Tatum, Evan Coleman, and Robbie Helms, the top ten on the cutoff playoff line. Yeah, those are the drivers trying to have good enough runs to keep above the cut line. I no doubt they're going to want to win, though, to see if they can lock themselves in. We got problems. It's third place. Zach Duncan going around on the front stretch, and the caution is out. Coleman collected as well. The 10 of Woods. This is a big stack up here. Third and fourth place. Duncan and Ely caught up in it. Uh-oh. spaghetti -o. Caution out. So let's take a look at the right. swag replay. We'll find out what happened. I looked Man. up. I was watching Stukesbury and happened to look up behind and saw it right oh. here is when I saw it. Luis involved. Ely involved. Now watch Coleman right there get caught up in it with Wood. Under the Starburst car. Juicy Crashy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we got some cars that'll probably be coming out of the pit lane for service. Here comes Braxton Deweese in the number 15, so our producer in our ear loses that bet. Braxton Deweese on the pit lane. Juicy Fruit car on the pit lane as well. Juicy Fruit, that's Starburst. Yeah, not Juicy Fruit, Starburst. <laughs> Same colors, but... Starburst car, yeah. Same colors as Juicy uh, Fruit. Remember, oh, uh, wow, look at the ball it? damage beating bang, man. Look at that, yeah. Who was it who ran the Juicy Fruit colors? And it was like a Ganassi car. Was it Sorensen or Montoya back in the day when Ganassi got that big deal with Wrigley's and had... One Pablo punch. Montoya used to drive the Juicy Fruit car. He, also, he did. Yeah, he, he ran Actually, it was a runoff well. deal. They ran back and forth, back and forth, yeah. Yeah, Juicy, I believe fruit, and, Juicy ran it. fruit and Big Red. I believe Sorensen ran it in the Nationwide, but uh, Montoya ran it in the Cup Series. Not going to say what our producer just said. Uh, all I'm going to say is it's 2012. It's 2020. Eight years later, our producer's still cracking jet dryer jokes. Tatum leading the way. Stukesbury, Sherwood, Hardison, Cody Terry up to the top five. First time I believe he's been up in the top five in quite some time. He's up uh, five positions. Biggest mover of the race so far, the 94 for the Daytona winner, Joshua Altus. He's up eight positions, Wesley. Actually, I take that back. Jacob Grant, Pillsbury, has gone from 23rd to 11th. He is 12 positions in the number five. That's right. We're working this uh, this caution and getting things set back up to get ready to go again after a yellow flag. Yeah. Speed lights are out in the pace car, which is going to give the control back to Ross Tatum. He went to school and uh, did not make the same mistake that he made on the initial start. Let's see if he does it again here. Coming up into the green. We're racing again here at Martinsville. And yet, much like the last one, he definitely learned his lesson after the initial race started. As he clears Stukesbury. Stukesbury able to fall in in front of Sherwood. They're side by side behind him. Back for the restart. As they work their way back into turns number three and four. Look out. There goes Hardison around. Down the back. Turn four. And caution is out now for the third time. Two cautions in the last ten laps or so. Five Hardison. laps, if you will. And there goes Hardison again. The number nine. And if I remember, a winner on the series. I think he won... Was it, was it Kansas? Kansas won winner, Kansas. yes. He won Kansas, but Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. We're in Martinsville, and he goes around there after contact. Who was that he got with? Ooh, that was a bottleneck Ooh, behind. There was that a whole bunch of cars quite, that crashed from yeah, there. Yeah, that continued for quite some time. Yeah, there goes Starburst, man. He stopped. Let's wow. See. 96 of Peterson. Who was that that made co the initial contact there with the... I believe it was the 22 of Cody Terry. The 22 got into him, Cody Terry. <coughs> watch Let's watch 96. this again right there. There's, yep, yep. There's Hardison, yep. And then bingo, bango, bongo, bango. Been watching too much Meet the Fockers. <laughs> bingo, bango, bongo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Tucker Wingo doing a burnout. You've been hanging around Judge Ivor too long. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our producer. Never I tell mind. You, oh my I goodness. tell you what, race fans oh. watching on LSR TV. One of these days, we're going to do an LSR TV after dark broadcast. You're now we'll get in trouble. What We've already been told. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you will hear what our producer says to us in our ear. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be back with more in a moment. We're in a caution. <laughs> bingo, bango, bongo.
We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do custom t-shirts, racing. We do any, actually any shirt. We do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts. Uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner, personalized. I mean, it, we do anything. It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats. Uh, embroidered shirts, um, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so like you can just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you just race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit differently. Uh, um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors. Everything is hand drawn. I mean, everything. We don't Photoshop anything onto it, onto a shirt or anything like that. Everything that we we go through, everything is drawn, and which is the reason for the uh, art fees. Because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us, and um, you know they're really good. So, yeah. so what we do is is on any any package that you do, we can we can mix and match. We can do any colors. You can do purple, red, blue, green, and do the rest black doesn't matter to us uh, with your design on there we can do hoodies we can do hoodies long sleeve shirts t-shirts tank tops um, it doesn't matter I mean just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do and you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum you know requirements they can call us 318-27 um, well so much for being a commercial break I was I was eating my Back underway. Green flag. A hot dog. <laughs> no, no, it's a Martinsville. Uh, it's a Martinsville hot dog. It is that's a steak and shake. It's a steak and shake milkshake. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you about. But I, I love the Martinsville Speedway hot dogs. I've never had one, so hopefully bucket mm. list. I've never been to Martinsville. I've never been to the East Coast for. You need to a just move race. from the West Coast. Is what you need to do. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I've been saying that for a couple of years now. Ross Tatum leading the way. Stukesbury in second. Big slide out of one car. I believe that was the 12 of Caleb Smith who had a big slide. The CEM Motorsports driver stuck on the outside right now. He's got some damage alongside Jonathan Woods in the number 10 who's running the Modified. Hey, it was, uh, was it officially announced that Modifieds are coming back in 2021 or was that yes, just sir. a Mark. hot rumor? Martinsville and Richmond in 2021. Martinsville and Richmond 2021 for the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour. Who doesn't love the open wheel madness here? And hopefully we get to see some of that coming on LSR TV here in the near future with some open wheel modifieds here. Not just at Martinsville, but just on LSR TV in general. Maybe we can get Ross Tatum to join that league because he seems to be doing pretty good right now. Leading the way, Stukesbury, Altus, Sherwood, Woods, your top five. So who knows? These guys who seem to like uh, Martinsville, maybe they would come and play on an open wheel race if one were to happen. Tatum and Stukesbury, Altus right now, one, two, and three. Sherwood and Woods in the top five. Here they come working their way off the corner. Let's talk a little about Joshua Altus' car, number 94. Joshua Altus is honoring the United States Marine Corps. The man that won the inaugural race of the season down in Daytona has uh, currently been the number one seed right now. He continues to lead the points with one win. Him, along with Wingo, Hardison, and Gilliams, all winners on the series as we move to race number five for the Thank You Veterans 250. By the way, five total sets of pit stops for this race. That's four sets of tires in the pit lane, plus the set they have that they started the race on. One fast repair. <coughs> Fuel window, Greg, is between 75 to 77 laps on a half a tank. They cannot fill the tank to 100%. It is a 50% fuel tank. So uh, we will probably see these guys come to the pit lane a lot. Well, on fuel mileage, you would expect three pit stops if that was the case. But again, you have an extra set on pit road. If we see an interesting race, which we have thus far, as we're clicking laps away now, but we've already seen three cautions. By the way, Jacob Grant in the number five. How about Pillsbury up to sixth right now? 
up 19 positions, Wesley. Far and away the biggest mover of the race thus far in his high five Toyota. But he's got just a little bit of front end damage here, but not enough to warrant him wanting to come in and use the fast repair because he doesn't want to give up all that track position that he's already gained. He's just trying to make it around to the first scheduled pit stop of the day to see if he can get the fast repair there. But he has done a spectacular job climbing through the field. Keys to the race include tire management. We talked about that. Who can take care of their tires the best here around Martinsville? Another thing that I have to mention is brakes. you got to save your brakes as well. Track position yeah, is going to be huge. And most importantly, manage your temper and keep the nose clean. If you can do those things, Greg, we're going to be talking to you at Victory Lane at night's end. That's asking an awful lot, though, because you have a combination of any of those. It can mean a bad night. And you talked about brakes, and I'm already looking. Most of the brake rotor rotors on these cars are already a glow, and we're only 42 laps in. Ooh, yep. the 14 of Fernet caught the wall. I've been watching him the last couple of laps. He's trying to work his way through the field. Got around Caleb Smith, but these tire or brake rotors are already glowing on board. As you see Fernet go into turn number one here. Now let's watch and see if we can get a look at it going into turn number three. See if those brake rotors light up once again. Not as bad as what I saw out of, I believe it was the five car of, of Grant a moment ago. Saw his brake rotors really starting to glow in the five. There you can see it right there. Watch when they go off in the turn number three. Look at these things just light it up. Ooh, we have a couple of We have an incident. Tyler Stooksbury up against the wall again oh, in no, car number 19. Place. Second place, Tyler Stooksbury. Taking a look at the swag replay. Was running second. Or no, he uh, he had fallen back. Altus and Hardison had gotten around him. Ooh, big shot in the shorts right there. And Sherwood gets collected as well. So a multi-car pileup as we approach lap number 50. Again. Third and fourth, third and fourth place involved here, as Stukesbury had gotten passed by Altus. Sherwood was next up. The yeah, that leader. was a 21. That was a 21 car, I believe it was the 21 of uh, Joey Beasley. And which, by the Ross way, Tatum Greg, on pit road, Wesley. Which, which, by the way, Greg, as we have Ross Tatum on pit road, uh, you remember last week Joey Beasley was talking about resigning from the series and uh it's good to see him come back because he was talking about stepping out of the car for the rest of the year and coming back next season but you see him tonight in car number 21 but uh yet again problems with tyler stukesbury the number one man in the pit stall comes out first ross tatum onto the pit lane and he'll exit there he is in that coca-cola number one other cars are on the pit lane So we are starting to see pit stops. You think it's a little too early, Greg? Uh, nah, not the way this race has been going. I uh, think, uh, think it was kind of smart to go ahead and take some tires now and uh, set yourself up for perhaps getting that track position right back. We're already under our fourth question here, working lap number 47. So, it nah, doesn't hurt to come in now, get yourself a fresh set of tires and get going again and... Uh, can't get up there once again. Now you're in the window that you can make it on two more pit stops if you want to. Guys like Tatum and Stukesbury and company, they're in position that they can make it on two more stops. The rest of these guys, Altus, Grant, Fernet, they still have to pit three more times. So, doesn't hurt to pit now. Get yourself back there and save some tire the rest of the way. I like to call it a pit now. Let's talk about another one of these drivers that are representing their veterans for Armed Forces Night for this Veterans Day 2020. Let's talk about Matthew Gilliams, driver of car number 28. You'll see his car right now, the number 28 machine, somewhere on the racetrack. Currently, he is in the 11th position. Matthew Gilliams. There he is. You see the colors. The special wrap job for this event. And Matthew Gilliams is honoring his grandfather who served during the Korean conflict. His car imitates a Willys M38 vehicle. On board also 
his bars and medals he received in his time of service, along with a few hidden items intended for his family to recognize. Matthew Gilliam saluting his grandfather here tonight for Armed Forces Night on this Veterans Day. Green flag back in here. So many awesome looking paint schemes. We'll be highlighting more and more of them throughout the course of the evening as Altus leads him to green in the turn number one. He's got Jacob Grant right behind him. Cody Furnett, we were talking about him a moment ago. Up to third now with Caleb Smith fourth. Keenan Massey rounding out the top five under pressure from Brockton Packard in the number 24. Jack Ely back up into the seventh spot after his issues earlier in the day. Along with Tucker Wingo right behind him, the New Hampshire winner going after Ely right now. Altus Daytona winner still leading the way though on this restart. So you see the 94 for the U.S. Marine Corps, Joshua Altus. We mentioned him. Now let's show you the five car. Number five right behind him. That's Jacob Grant. He's representing the U.S. Army for lifelong best friend who serves in the Army. Jacob hasn't seen his friend in almost three years since high school, but is very proud of him, and he is so proudly adorning the U.S. Army colors. And there you see that machine right there. Cody Fournette, I got to say, Greg, in the number 14, he has really turned things around here in the last couple of races and has really impressed me as we are under 200 laps to go now. Done a phenomenal job climbing through the field. Started 13th up in third right now. Wesley, look at this stat. The top six on the board right now. Altus, Grant, Fournette, Smith, Massey, and Packard. The top six all started outside of the top 10. There are only two drivers in the top 10 right now that started there. Eight drivers from outside the top worked their way up inside it here on lap 54. Altus, Grant, Fernet, Smith, Massey, the top five. Look at these nice looking cars as they work their way. There's the Kong entry number five. We mentioned Grant. Well, let's talk about uh, now the man of Brockton Packard, who currently sits in. Got a problem with Cody Terry having problems with the 22, falling back in 17th. Falling way back, will still stand on the green flag. Cody Terry with the U.S. Navy colors. Cody Terry having the Navy colors on his car. No harm, no foul. Keeps on going. No caution. Let's pick up again Brockton Packard in the number eight position. Car number 24. And uh, he is uh, driving for his father, who is in active duty Army. He was also Navy in his prior services. His father is in the is active in the Army and currently also recently in the Navy. His scheme is the 2011 Jeff Gordon Coke 600 scheme, and we got problems on the racetrack and cautions out. Will Duvall again? Wow. Will Will Duvall right behind? Right behind him, got collected with Robbie Helms. This started right behind Brockton Packard. Duvall was inside of Tucker Wingo when this all happened. Robbie Helm. See if we can pick up the 32 of Duvall. Because it's going to start right there. Got to the inside of Wingo and they touched doors and Duvall went around and Helm's nowhere to go. Take another look at it. Second time for Will Duvall out of turn four. You're going to watch. He's going to get a big run off of turn number two on Tucker Wingo. Right here he gets a big run back stretch gets a nice shot to the inside but right there they make contact ball goes around and sure gets it oh Beasley almost got collected in it in 21 kept on going the rest of the there field you is on see our caution road now Wesley yeah rest of the field that had not yet come down is now on pit road on lap number 60 except for the starburst car here comes everybody on the pit lane. Fournette, Altus, Smith, Wingo. Grant's on pit lane. Partisan. And you notice how unique the pit stalls are here. You can actually pit from turn two all the way around to turn number three and four. To the pit stalls here. It comes off of pit road. 
And Wesley, something might have happened to the 94 of Altus because he was slow on the backstretch, letting everybody pass him. Believe the 94 of Altus may have got a penalty. A penalty coming up in the EOL penalty on the 94. And that Lots is a waiting. tough break there. Let's see if he's, he's letting everybody pass him. Yeah, he is. He's down on the front stretch, letting everybody by. So a penalty perhaps on the 94. Perhaps too fast entering or exiting. We'll have to wait for confirmation. He's got to let the entire field go here. And DOL penalty on the 94 of Joshua Altus. Caution out again here at Martinsville. So Ross Tatum is uh, currently the man out in front in the number one machine. He, of course, you remember he did pit earlier. Got my buddy Evan Coleman in the Starburst Fruit Snacks car, number 51, now to second. Jonathan Woods is third in the number 10. Zachary Stone. Hey, Greg, let's talk about Zachary Car number 83. Uh, man, right now, up 20 positions. He's in fourth. Probably a, a great run for him right now on the racetrack. Very good run for Stone in the 83. And he's a guy who's in need of a good run, Wesley. He has had some disappointing runs here this season. Looks like, if I had to hazard a guess, seeing U.S. Navy and the logo right there in front of the door, that number 83, he's paying tribute to the Blue Angels here tonight. And that's a cool one for me because one of my childhood friends from high school is actually a service member on the Blue Angels this upcoming 2021 season. So that's a cool one for me to see that car out there right now. Ready to come back to the green flag here at Martinsville. Tatum on the front. jump. He gets the whole shot. And again, and that he, goes back to what we talked about there, Wesley, under that last caution. I, how I liked when he pitted because everyone else was probably going to come under the next caution. He gets that track position right back. There it is. And not a whole lot of green flag laps. The tire wear not going to be very much difference right now. I like the call by Tatum when he did. Back to turn number three and four. Zachary Stone, bottom of the racetrack. Here comes the five of Grant. Uh, they're going to battle. Yeah, I'm go surprised ahead. that uh, Grant did not take a fast repair when he came down pit road. Still got the damage on. Surprised that he did not take the fast repair, but it doesn't be appear to be slowing them down so maybe he's saving it for the next pit stop which we believe will probably come a little bit after halfway save it for the second half of the race down the back straight away riding on with the kong number five for pillsbury jacob grant struggled in qualifying i don't even think he took time in qualifying but look at the run he's got now decently in third Brennan yeah, in fourth, from Stone in fifth. Grant up 20 positions after himself and one other driver who's also in the top five, Zachary Stone. They did not qualify, Wesley. Those are the two that did not turn a lap. Stone and Grant are both in the top five after that one. To the inside. The run on Woods. He'll try to go for two for one and carry Fernet with him. He's on the outside lane. Car looking like a modified. Car looks like a modified, Greg, and he's in the top five in the 10. That has been a spectacular job by Jonathan Woods in fourth position right now. Like you said, top, ten, or top five right now. Car looking like a modified, showing the case that, you know, hey, modifieds here at Martinsville seem to know their way around. Here he is coming off turn number four under pressure right now from Caleb Smith. He took a fast repair under that caution as Jacob Grant has gotten around for net for a second and is trying to set sail now to catch Tatum. The 18 car, Robbie Helms, understanding for the Marines, has not pitted in 71 laps. Let's look on the ticker on the bottom. 
No pit stops yet for the number 18. And he is on a 72 lap green flag run for the driver of Robbie Helms. By the way, a little more story on him. He is a veteran himself. Thanks again for your service. Again, we want to thank Robbie Helms for his service to our country. Robbie is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran and served as a combat engineer from 24 to 2011, OEF 2010 and 11 in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. He is running a scheme from Trade in Paints that is special to him and reminds him of his time in the sand. All of us from the SMB Cup Series, LSR TV and CRN would like to thank him for his service of the 18. And what a lap there. Here comes Ross Tatum. We're going to try to close in and put him a lap down. And that's the number seven car. Excuse me. That's Gordon. Caution. But the caution is out. Yep. Caution is out. Oh, it's Brock mm. Packard in the 24. Take another look at what happened here on the swag replay. Dukesbury behind him gets to the inside. I believe this is the lap before because that was up in turn number three. So we'll see if Stukesbury is able to clear. Zachary Stone off the pace just a little bit in front of them after not getting a good exit off of four. Oh, no, that was off turn number two. And Packard just kind of lost it by himself there on the outside. By the way, the 2011 Coca-Cola 600 car at Charlotte for Brockton Packard that Jeff Gordon drove. Those are the colors. All right. <laughs> Closing in on 100 laps, 70, 70, and back with more coverage from Martinsville in a moment. The SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Ready to come back to the Thank You Veterans 250. We're approaching lap number 80 complete. Green back in the air. And on the jump, it's the USA. Coca-Cola number one. Ross Tatum on the whole shot. He'll carry Fernet with him. Grant on the outside. Smith behind him as they go to three. 
Grant able to clear for net just about, but for net fights back on the inside through three and four, gets a nice run through the center and is able to get back up to the door of Grant. Battle for second between Fernet and Grant. Doing a fantastic job as Cody Fernet. Trouble. He will clear him this time. Problems in turn number one and two. We saw it all break loose. It's Brockton Packard again. Cody Terry involved. Cody Terry and a couple other cars too, man. Holy cow, we're under yellow. The look on the swag replay. Another so caution. Coleman breaks, so Coleman breaks loose and is able to get through it. Oh, right there. Oh, Stukesbury, I believe, and Ely caught up in it as well. Stone involved. Stone Ely. The 22 of Cody Terry. And also the 24 of Brockton Packard. All again. Multi-car accident in between turns number one and two. We saw it. Just a glimpse of it whenever we had our fan camera there showing you. And, and when they worked their way back off the corner, I knew I saw just out of the twinkle of my eye a little smoke. And it sounded like some banging. And, and there you see the end result there with the caution. So... Oh, Ross Tatum is the man that leads the way. We have another yellow flag. We'll try this again. Ross Tatum has led, I believe, the most laps here so far tonight. Two stints out front. Got beat on the initial restart. Since then, went to school and did not let that happen again. Here he is leading the way for the second time here tonight after using a, a earlier pit stop than the rest of his companions that were up front with him to fall back in a little bit. Sacrifice some track position. Now has worked his way back up to where he can make it on only two more pit stops. So... The question is, Wesley, what does he do now moving forward? We've seen the cautions start striking here, here early in this one. If we get a long green flag run for Tatum, when does he start thinking about coming down pit road again? Remember, only 75 laps or so on a fuel run as these drivers are only allowed to fill their tanks to half full. That's right, half full between 75 to 77 laps on a green flag run. We were talking about Robbie Helms earlier. Is he pitted yet in the 18? Let's go back uh -huh. and check the 18. Let's see if he's pitted again. Let's check his statistics. If he's pitted yet, he I think yes, he, he did. did. Yes, he in. did. He yep. came in under the last caution. But he did stay out there for almost 70 plus laps. I remember that. Seeing a few more drivers out there with modifieds on track. Peterson, one of them in the 96. Uh, some of our drivers deep in the back here. Zach Duncan, he's five laps down with a fast repair. Braxton DeWeese kind of mired back there in 17th. He had to use a fast repair. Evan Coleman had to use a fast repair. But there are drivers out there driving modifieds right now. So the number of that will continue to grow here. One driver out of the race, Joey Beasley in the number 21 after the incident earlier in the day with Stukesbury as the lights go out of the pace car. Ross Tatum. Ready to bring him to the green flag. Cody Fernet to the outside. Jacob Grant along with Caleb Smith. Row number two. Here comes the field ready for the restart as they'll work their way to the Geico restart zone out of turn number four. Martinsville, the short track. Closing in on 100 complete. Green back in the air on this Veterans Day. What a slide there by Caleb Smith on the restart. Did you see the 12 car, how loose he got there on the restart? Did a nice job saving it and keeping the fourth spot. Boy, he scared me there on that restart in that 12 car. Able to keep it going in fourth right now. Got Tatum. Burnett and Grant in front of him. Massey behind him. Haven't talked about Keenan Massey yet tonight in the number four, but he's had a pretty solid night after starting 20th on the day. He's yeah, worked his true. way up into the top five and has been up there for the last 30 or so laps. 
Beautiful looking cars here for. Oh, contact wow. The two race winners here this season, Altus and Wingo, going around. Was getting ready to talk about no. how Altus had climbed through the field, and then all of a sudden, around goes Wingo. There was Another contact caution. in turn one. I lost count. We even got the 10 cautions yet. I think we're at eight or nine. I think we're at eight now on this one. Let's take a look at right there. Just goes down in and two drivers just start fighting over the same piece of real estate. Everyone does a nice job to get around Wingo, but unfortunately, the New Hampshire winner now going to have to work through the field. Caution out again, Wingo and Altus get together. A couple of winners that have already advanced into the playoffs. Partisan on pit lane. He's a winner at Kansas. And we are approaching uh, 100 laps about to be complete here. It's, man, another yellow flag. We'll get him re-racked, restacked, try to go again here. And while we do that, let's uh, honor another one of our Armed Forces drivers on this Veterans Day. Car number 29. Let's show you the number 29. And that is Rob Sherwood. He currently is on the racetrack. The number 29, Rob Sherwood. Well, he's in the back, but he's still out there doing good. He's currently in the top 10 and ninth, actually. Rob Sherwood in the number 29, in the uh, 29, honoring. Air Force and Army with names of six friends and family, either of active duty or retired for the Army Air Force, including his grandfather, whose name is above the window. So that's the look at the number 29 of Rob Sherwood honoring the Army and Navy on this, or the Army and the Air Force on this uh, Veterans Day race. And I like that. That's a sharp looking paint job there, wrap job on that car. It is very sharp looking on the number 29. Several of them this season here or this evening, Wesley. They, these drivers have stepped up big time to pay tribute to the men and women who make it to where we're able to do this. And they have done a spectacular job stepping up and paying tribute to them. A couple drivers on pit road as well. So deep in the field, we're seeing some pit stops. Duncan and Hardison are the two on pit road right now. As we click laps away here in the Veterans Day 250, a lot of drivers have been paying tribute tonight to the military, which today's for them, Wesley. It's Veterans Day. These, this day and everything that we do in this country would not be possible if not for those men and women in uniform who put their lives on the line and pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we can do this every night. And by the way, we want to also acknowledge Appalachian Hauler Hunters as they voluntarily gave up the Rice title tonight to show support to our veterans. And we do uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, again, thank you to Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Nonetheless, uh, under the yellow flag, we got a whole bunch of other drivers that we'll mention along the way, including... Uh, Peterson, Terry, Gardner, Stone, Packard, uh, DeWeese, just some of the other names along the way. I think I'm, I'm trying to make sure I get through all of them. But anyhow, we're back to the green flag here in Martinsville. I think I got about four drivers left to mention here. We wanted to mention every single one of them in the race, and we said that we would as we're back underway. Tatum on the jump. Here comes Pillsbury. Jacob Grant will carry. Fernet up on the outside, Smith for the bottom, and look at Packard back in the battle as well as Altus is 2 and 94. Boy, Altus is going on that restart, getting around both Stukesbury and Massey on that restart. Now trying to get Fernet to move in the fourth. He will. Altus into number 94, trying to reel in Caleb Smith now in third position is that 12 car he's already used the fast repair and he has some damage on the back of that 12 car once again that's not going to help his cause the rest of the way two from 100 here wesley and halfway will be another 25 after that as tatum tries to click him away he's led the most laps thus far but josh altis had just took the lead when he had to come down pit road he wants to get the lead back to daytona winner to try to become the first repeat winner of the season working lap number 99 of 250. 
But up on lap 100. <clears throat> Coming up on 100 complete here in just a moment off of turn four. Here they come to the line. And there is Joshua Altus again, the winner at Daytona when the season started almost a month ago. Leads the way to the back stretch behind him. Smith, he's in, four, uh, in the number three position. By the way, we're getting reports that possibly the mics are choppy. Uh, it's probably something on YouTube's end. They've been having problems all day because it, from the broadcast feed for LSR TV, he's saying it sounds good. So, oh well, yeah, we continue along, Greg. Yeah, YouTube had those issues earlier today. They get they were able to get back up and running about 90 seconds before we hit the on switch to go live here tonight. Yeah. So probably <laughs> still some issues being worked out here on YouTube's end. So we apologize for the technical difficulties there with the microphones. Again, we believe it's a YouTube server issue because they had right. massive issues earlier in the day and yeah. just in time came back. And again, if these issues do spring up again, we're going to make the switch over to our Facebook feed. We will post a link to the Facebook feed and you can follow along with us there if YouTube does encounter those issues once again. Caution is out. Yellow flag out again. This is caution number nine. And I want to say it might be for Duvall again. Swag replay, check it out. What happened to the Cowboy? The Cowboy, Will Duvall, the one thumb winder. There he is, oh man, look at that, just, just. Turn oh. four. Huh. You know, he just, he just struggles. Dirt, pavement, one thumbs, no thumbs. He just, he's a dark deceptions. He Cowboy struggles. Got, Cowboy he got struggles. bucked off the horse there. Pit stops underway here, Wesley. I see Caleb Smith and uh, believe 14 of Fournette coming down. So some drivers oh. on pit road. Yeah, here comes Caleb Smith and Fournette in the 14. has been looking real good. Will Duvall, he might have parked it. By the way, you can get so many wrecking points or damage points, and eventually they will park you. Uh, there's the Nintendo colors of the number 12, Caleb Smith. As we go back under the yellow flag. Race off pit road. There's Evan Coleman going to his pit stop. Ross Tatum. Jacob Grant, I don't even think they did it, actually. There goes Donnie Wing uh, Tucker Wingo. Some other cars pulling in. And this will get us a chance to highlight a couple of other cars for Armed Forces Night. Let's find the number 96 of Zachary Peterson. And his car is modeled after the U.S. Coast Guard ship. Car number 96 of Zachary Peterson. We'll try to find him real quickly. He is... Uh, Right there. Modeled after a Coast Guard ship. You see that? The way it's kind of designed there with the Coast Guard colors. Thank you, Zachary. Uh, in addition to that, let's uh, show you uh, the number seven, Christian Gardner. And he is, is uh, modeled on a wrap job for the prisoners of war missing in action. How about that? That's a sharp looking car, even though it looks like a modified. Old Glory proudly in the POW EMA model sticker on the top. And I believe we have one more that we need to mention, <clears throat> and we'll have all of them completely taken care of. And that is the number. 83 of Zachary Stone, and I think you already hinted on him one time already, Greg. He has the Blue Angels, the U.S. Navy and the Blue Angels on that car, number 83, and that is a sharp mamma jamma right there. That is a awesome 
looking scheme. And again, talked about it, it's special to me because one of my high school friends, one of my best friends from seventh grade, is on the maintenance team of the Blue Angels for the upcoming 2021 season. So that one hits pretty close to me as well. So he's on maintenance. He doesn't fly them. He just no. he does the maintenance and cleans them and gets them all ship shop and ready to go to fly on the, in the air. Yep. Here we go. Green flag in the air. Back for the restart. Over 100 laps. We're closing in on halfway for the Thank You Veterans 250. Here at Martinsville, this is the S&B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters on LSIR TV. And for those that are listening on CRN Sports at WeAreCRN.com, Wesley Outland, Greg Rance, uh, Charles Wooten in the production. Oh, Karen. Here we go for the lead. Go, Trouble. Grant goes around. Gets almost into the 19 of Stukesbury. No caution. Stay we stay green as Grant got No caution. Hit. Grant got hit in the nose and got put back the right way. Not happy on the radio. This is going on right as Altus got around Tatum for the race lead. They made contact. Bay Green for the time being. But wow. I'm surprised you didn't get a caution there. Let's take a look at a swag replay to show you what kind of chaos just ensued. Watch that number five of Grant. And a whole host of others. Look at that right there. A little Contacted punt from Gardner. the seven from Gardner. And then everyone else from Stooksbury, the Black Four, everybody, Massey, everyone on the binders quickly to miss him. And there you see it. And they quickly got untangled, got back going. No caution, Greg, which is very unusual here at Martinsville. Yeah, that was a nice job by the drivers to keep it going here. I'm sure they're a little disappointed, the guys involved in the caution, such as Grant, who did not get the caution there. And he already had damage on. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten it yet. Now, with the way that car is kind of beaten, banged up now, I'm pretty sure they are going to have to take the fast repair on the number five car moving forward here. Definitely not the start that he wanted. In the number five car, he's had so much speed in that thing as well, Wesley. He had gotten up as high as second after starting 23rd on a provisional. Here he is in seventh now trying to get back around Cody Terry. Off of turn number four. Back down the front stretch into turn number one. And we see all these drivers fighting, clawing for position. Grant. In the five car, working his way up. Had such a good run and he fell behind. Got a couple of Navy cars in front of him. He's stuck in the middle. As that battle goes on back into turn number one and two, we're approaching halfway. And the caution, caution. is out again. Yellow flag for the 10th time. Yellow flag coming out. We'll have to find out what happened. Typical Martinsville, Greg, what do you think? I think it's yeah. uh, Peterson in the 96. And it may be Peterson in the 96. That's Tucker Wingo behind him. We can peek on the outside. And ooh, no, no fault there of anyone. Just got loose off of four. Just simply lost it. <laughs> Yellow flag coming out. <laughs> By the top five, seven, eight, ten, coming to the pit lane, except for Caleb Smith. Spencer Hardison, they'll climb up the scoring pylon, but it's Altus, Tatum, Gardner, Massey, Sherwood, Terry, Grant, DeWeese, Wood, Stone, Ely. All on the pit lane for service, Greg, as we approach lap 118. All on, or all on pit road here, and I'm watching the five of Grant. He did not take the fast repair again, Wesley. I'm very surprised he's yet to take it in the number five car. Rolling off the pit lane. Here comes the Calvary. Looks like Altus will be the first one off. Everyone else behind him, including Ross Tatum, Kenan Massey. Braxton Luis, Jacob Grant, Pillsbury, Cody Terry, Zachary Stone. Here comes the pace car. And behind the pace car is the number 12. As it works its way back into uh, turn number two to the back straightaway, you see him leading the way. Caleb Smith in the number 12. Spencer Hardison 
behind him. Robbie Helms, Cody Frenette, Evan Coleman, Brock Backard. Those six cars did not pit. Joshua Altis, the first off the pit lane. Greg, 120 coming in. Halfway quickly approaching here at Martinsville. Halfway coming up. We should reach it on the next green flag cycle, so make sure that you guys are making your bets now. Who is going to take home this victory here tonight? Pick a car, pick a driver, pick a number, because we've seen this race turn into a race of comers and goers here thus far tonight. Caleb Smith in the 12, leading the way. Spencer Hardison in that number nine. Wesley, he had the incidents earlier in the day. He's already up to second. Robbie Helms in the 18. We talked about him waiting a while to pit. Here he is in third. Yeah, what a way for him to redeem himself for sure as he has climbed the ladder to the number three position. Caleb Smith, the Nintendo number 12. Looking strong, Spencer, Har Spencer Hardison, the Kansas winner, struggle along the way. Has moved back to second. Ro uh, Robbie Helms, you're looking at him in the number 18. He looks good in his car. Cody Fournette, we mentioned him earlier. Very impressed with the job in the 14. And we... We'll double them up for the restart. We're gonna try it again. Grant. Excuse me, Smith leading the way. Then That's Hardison, right. Helms, Fernet, and Coleman, your top five, we go green. Lap 122 as we approach the halfway mark. Back straight away into three. There you see Smith, Hardison, Fournette. Look at this man up on the outside lane, starting to make something happen. Keeping it on all those cars and uh, the caution, caution out again. And, and there's that car Cody I was Perry. telling you to keep an eye on that was starting to climb, and he ends up crashing. By Cody Terry going around in two. Peace. Up in front of him, Terry all by himself up here. You see Massey and ooh, Massey with a shot there from Grant going in the three, and that catapulted them all the way up into the Navy 22 of Terry there, Wesley. Yeah, problems for the 22 there of Cody Terry. Under the yellow flag, we're coming up on halfway in the next lap or two. Caleb Smith, let's take a look at the sawblade.com top five. As you see Smith out in front, everyone else. Back with more for the second half for the veterans on Veterans Day 2020 for Martinsville when we return.
here at Martinsville. We are getting ready for the restart. Second half of the Thank You Veterans 250. Hopefully it'll be more cleaner than the first half. At Martinsville, we're back underway. Caleb Smith out to the lead in the 12. One car slow there on the bottom. I believe that's the 7. Trying to get back up to speed. Smith leading the way. Hardison, Packard, Fernet, Coleman, Cox. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You okay there, bud? No, oh, no. Caution's out again. All right. Let's see what happened. Here on the swag replay. Brockton Packard in the 24. Watch him. There's the 7. Burnett Looks like Cody Burnett just kind of hooked the left rear. Oh, yeah. oh, connection issues. Yeah. Connection issues had a horrible time there. And then unfortunately, Packard gets the worst of it. You, so, you say bingo, bango, bongo. I say ink and blink and nod. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Under caution once again. All right, at guys, question number three. 1999 at Barnesville. This driver got his second and final NASCAR win. Do you know what it was? No, John Andretti. And it was his uh, first ever win for Petty Motorsports. Car number 43. Petty won NASCAR races? What are you talking about? Our producers lost it. Kyle, Kyle Petty won NASCAR races, uh, uh, Charles? Mr. Producer? I'm, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you. Matter of, fact, caution here. matter of fact, one of the uh, historic races, a matter of fact, one of the historic races that, uh, that Kyle Petty won was the race where Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip wrecked each other at Richmond, at the Richmond Fairground Speedway. Kyle Petty ended up winning that race. No, sir, it wasn't. <laughs> Greg, you, you tell tell him that Kyle Petty's won races. Eight career wins for Kyle Petty in the NASCAR Cup Series. There you go. As I hear our producer, I hear our producer, I believe, working on some taco wings in his, uh, here in the production truck today. Where's ours? <laughs> Lights are out on the pace car. Caleb Smith taking the outside lane. Believe he did the same thing on the previous restart. Wesley, so we'll see how it goes from here. If it works again, just past halfway. I'm going to click away some laps here and get this race in the books and move on to next week. So let's try to continue this race here. Look at Hardison now on the inside. Smith on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Smith up the racetrack. Here comes Hardison. He'll open up the door to Altus on the inside. He'll carry along with him Braxton DeWeese for third. DeWeese up to third. Altus breaks loose in front of him. DeWeese has to check up, and that's going to allow Hardison to get a run back on the outside. Tatum in the one, trying to get up there. But a slide there from Hardison allows DeWeese to clear off turn two. And look at that little contact there. There goes Tatum up the racetrack. He about got into the nine of Hardison. Held on to it, saved it. And they're going to go back into the corner again. Mm. 
Ross Tatum, the man that's out in front, is still Joshua Altus Tatum, who led most of the way. Now in the first half, Greg Myard in the back. He's in the top five and fourth, and he's trying to hold off the likes of Hardison and Smith. All these guys coming after him now. Here comes Coleman in the in the in the in the the starburst color number 51. Here he comes. Coleman trying to get up there. Tatum is going after Caleb Smith. He's trying to make his way back up to the race lead after pit stop strategy mired him back there in or deeper in the field. Trying to get around Caleb Smith right now. Try to get up there and get around him. One car is now out of the race officially. Make it two. Will Duvall in the 32 has parked it for the night. As to the inside goes Ross Tatum. Move Tatum to third. Working 140 laps complete this time by. When they come to the stripe, there is 110 laps to go. And a caution. Yellow flag number 12. And it is for Zachary Stone. In car number 83, what a great run he had going for him, Greg. And now problems for the Blue Angels, number 83. You made a big run here on top of Got up under Wingo. Wingo. Yeah, got up under Wingo. Lost oh, it. just lost it off turn four. And Ooh, a it looks like maybe. Yeah, it looks like maybe Peterson just helped him tap. out there. Just a tap. <laughs> Caution is out again. Well, well, well. Closing in on the final 100 laps of this race. It has been caution field. This is yellow flag number 12. By the way, don't forget, tomorrow night, got a late night show for you. Of course, uh, due to amicable reasons, swag no longer broadcast on LSR TV. Or, or, so they will be doing a, we got a Charlotte, Greg, for the next round of the West Bay Napa Auto Parts playoffs. And then I believe it's the final race in the round of 12. Yes, playoff cutoff race, so make sure you tune in tonight here or tomorrow night on LSR TV. Hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell to see that one live. It's a cutoff race here, and it's been an exciting round here in the round of 12 for the Cup or Truck Series tomorrow for the Northwest Truck Series, the West Bay and Napa Auto Arts playoffs. Round of 12 wraps up tomorrow. This has been a caution flag fiesta without tacos for our producer. Joshua Altis, the man out in front of the 94, followed by the 15, Braxton DeWeese. You know, you know, Greg, Braxton's one of those drivers, and even Joshua, too. They, 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 get, they get in problems, okay? And somehow or another, they find a way to get back to the front. And a phenomenal performance out of them here tonight. DeWee still looking for that first win. Altus in the second position. Going to be just over 100 to go when we take the green flag here once again. Altus, DeWee, ate him up to third again after falling back earlier in the race. Caleb Smith, Evan Coleman, your top five. Jack Ely, we haven't talked about him ever since getting caught up in an incident earlier today. But here he is up in sixth. Pace car is in. Let's try it again. Well, we'll try this one more time. Closing in on the final century grind around Martinsville for our veterans. Green back out. 
USA colors of the number 94, Joshua Altus on the whole shot. He'll pull away from the Navy of Deweese, the one USA of Old Glory, Ross Tatum, and the Nintendo number 12 of Caleb Smith. We're back underway at Martinsville. Underway, coming up to start lap 148. Altus has led for about the last 30 or so laps. Deweese up in second. A little bit of a slide out of Deweese there through one and two. Gives it back to Hardis, or Altus into number 94. Is able to open up a little bit more of a, a lead. Pull away from Deweese. The Daytona winner, Altus, won that race under controversial circumstances as well, Wesley. We saw that black flag to Joey Petrie at the end of that race. Altus came away with the winner at that one. Deweese in the 15. He's still searching for that first win, but he's under pressure from Ross Tatum as well. We're going to see a three-car battle here before it's too long. No, we're not. We're going to see a caution. Friday the 13th is on Friday. And we have our 13th caution now at Martinsville. <laughs> I believe it's Spencer Hardison. Spencer Hardison, I believe, of the nine car. Putting us in the yellow flag. Let's see it. Oh, did he get Ooh, into Fernet? Wow. Yeah, just a little Props contact. Props to Cody Fernet for not backing down, Greg. Great job by Fernet to hold his ground there. But unfortunately, Hardison and Fernet get together. Ooh, is Hardison getting up there into the back bumper of the 14? We've got, yeah, some, I think uh, he, we got yeah. some tempers going. Wow. I don't see how you can blame it on Fernet. It's not Fernet's fault. Hardison made a dumb move, and he got into him. Let's show it to you one more time on the swag replay extended. Look at this. You can't blame it on the 14. Well, a, Yeah, right here. Watch, watch this. Another lap around. They're going to come back around right here. You see Hardison was already trying to get to him to make a pass. This is down the straightaway. And here we go into the corner. Watch this, Greg. I mean, the nine just got right into the 14. You can't say it's the can't say it's the 14's fault. Look at that. Hardison just trying Hardison just trying to get the run on the inside and unfortunately Fernet was there. Get together and that's just a product of short track racing here. And it's, it's Eric Guevara says, caution here, caution there, caution everywhere. <laughs> oh, wow. And this is turned caution on the cool down lap. Watch this while we're under yellow. Hardison coming up. I, Hardison feeling that the 14 of Fernet could give him a little bit more room. No, up I don't think he ever hit him. And just yeah, right, right there. there. Just right there. Just a little tap. Comes up to say hello to Fernet. But I don't think it's Cody's fault. I mean, you see it, Greg. Do you see Cody at fault in the 14? I really don't. I don't really the see nine, either. The of them. nine hooked up and got into the left rear. I don't really see either of them at fault there. I think uh, Hardison was just trying to make pass, and the car just unfortunately slid up the track just a little bit. I wouldn't throw blame at anyone in particular, but that's just a product of short track racing. You're going to see tempers, and I don't jump think that's out. the last time we're going to see tempers. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wonder yellow again here. Tomorrow night, playoffs for the trucks. Charlotte. 11.45 Eastern Time on LSR TV and CRN from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Friday night it is the, what, what are they calling it now? Friday night, Greg, what do they call it? You did the opening the race last week for me. The American iRacing League, race number two here coming up on Southern National. Wesley, you're going to be on that call. I'm not going to be here this week, so we're tapping or tagging out. And you're yeah. going to take that one before we meet up again for week number three of that one. Green flag Charles, coming back out. Me and Charles going to do it together. Green it out. Here we go. Back underway. Do what? Where the hell are you going to be? All this leading the way <laughs> as they try to figure <laughs> out schedules here. No, Altus Charles better be there. What are you the talking inside. about? Do we oh. try to get to the inside of Altus as Tatum? Trying to get around Smith and Will. So no, Greg, don't let him change the back. subject. Don't 
don't don't let him change the subject. No, no, I'm just playing. He will be there. We'll be there Friday. And then I think it's Sunday. Where are we going to, Greg? Sunday for the Northwest Tour presented by Joe's Racing Products. Where is that going to be Sunday? Headed to the cornfields of Iowa for, I believe, 150 laps at the 7 8 Mile Iowa facility. Iowa Speedway. Iowa Speedway. Woohoo! Yep. And that race has produced some of our best races in series history. And if you've seen the Northwest Tours first two races, of course, Wilkesboro this past one and uh, USA two Caution's weeks ago, out. Caution out here at Beasley 21. Cody Terry Cody in 22. Terry. Yeah, Cody Terry. Zach Duncan right in front of him there. There's the 83 high there. Backery Stone. Outside, everyone getting by, and then and, oh, oh. the two Navy cars get together. That looked almost identical slide-wise to what we just Navy. saw with Hardison. <laughs> identical to what we saw. <laughs> and the Navy having some infighting here <laughs> at Martinsville. <laughs> oh, I'm not, not going there, to say Producer. that. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh, but it's the truth. <laughs> you should take that and replay it and, and, and repeat that. What we just said. You should say that. You know? nope, I'm not saying it. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> oh, by the way, Greg, I hate that I missed you on uh, on Sunday for the the Northwest Tour at, uh, at at North Wilkesboro. I was hoping that the National 100 would not run so long, but I got to looking at the clock and I got to looking at the race, and I was just like, "Yeah, there ain't no way we're going to be done in time." <laughs> hey, but you got to see uh, one of the big underdog stories of the year win the National 100. Hunt the front, baby, Joseph. Joyner oh yeah, the man, win. Joseph Joiner, my buddy, man. I'm known that cat for a couple of years now, and you know he's always struggled and had bad equipment or just not good handling cars, engines, makes mistakes, whatever. And for him to win the National 100, and, and I didn't even realize this, but this was like, that was like a big goal for him, was like, I want to win this race. And and he did it, and uh, it was special. And wasn't per se happy with the way the finish turned out between Parker Martin and, Josh, and uh, Jason Hyatt. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, you know, I, I, I pick them in I racing and they crash, and I pick them in real life and they crash. I said, and Jason Hyatt was my pick to win the National 100, Greg, and you saw what happened. He got the he got hooked by Parker Martin on the white flag lap. So I don't know what to think. My, go with it. My pick got the win. Who did? Joiner, he was my pick to win it. You were pick. You're lying. You didn't. Even, no, I, was, I picked Joiner. Okay. Well, Altus anyhow, he way. won. Altus leading the way. Do we second Tatum, Smith, Ely? Your top five. Oh, yeah, the Power Eye Nationals, the Power Eye Midget Nationals were taking registrations for that race. I think registration, you got about another month, another three, three weeks. weeks to get signed up for it. 120 Greg, slots I, I, available. I, Greg, I heard, you cut a, uh, I heard you cut a promo for it. I did. You can catch it uh, on the Team Outlaw YouTube channel. We might, be, we might be able to squeeze it into a broadcast or two here between now and then as we get set to go green. Joshua Altus, Braxton DeWeese on the front row. Can DeWeese get around Altus and get that first uh, first win? Altus able to break away, but DeWeese able to get back to the inside in the U.S. Navy number 15 Toyota slide from Caleb Smith in fourth. That opens the door for Ely. So there's Altus. There is the Navy machine of Braxton Deweese driving in memory of his grandfather. And then you have Ross Tatum, Caleb Smith, all those drivers working their way back around the straightaway in the corner number one and two. Jack Ely, by the way. Can I mention Jack Ely in the 54? He's now back to the top five. Work. Nice work for Ely in the 54. What he's had happen to him today, that's got to feel good to be able to piece that together. Watch them as they work their way into the corner to the back straightaway. 
Altis, Deweese, Tatum, Smith, Ely, top five, Wingo, Stukesbury, Woods, Grant, Coleman in the top ten. Here they work their way out of turn four. Back down the front straight away. You see Fernet battling with Massey, with Hardison, all in that mix. That's a, a nice battle going on inside the top 10 or outside the top 10 for that matter. Hardison's kind of fell back here the last uh, 20 laps or so, Greg. Had that issue with Fernet that put us under a caution. One caution to go, by the way, look who's dragging up in front of Spencer Hardison. Uh, I'm seeing the red and white number 14 right in front of Hardison, so we're going to have to keep our eyes on this here for the next few laps to see if Hardison gets back up to Fernet. You see it right there. Wonder if Hardison might be wondering if some payback is a uh, option here after what happened earlier today in this one. Remember, race car drivers, they have long memories. Caution's out, and Hardison was getting close to Fernet when that caution came out. Yellow flag number 14. Look at a swag replay. Looking We're for thinking it's Brockton the Packer, and yeah, there he Brockton goes. Packer gets together with Gilliams. Good guess there, Charles. Seen a lot of uh, a lot of things happen in turn two here tonight, Wesley. Yeah. Packard and Peterson. Some damaged cars on the pit lane. They're all running down. Joshua Altus in the 94. Sawblade top five. Down below the bottom of the left of the screen. You see him? Deweese in second. Tatum, Ely, Wingo. Yeah. We have got now two drivers that have won in the last four races. In the top five, Deweese, Tatum, and Ely looking for their first. Back with more from Martinsville. We'll go side by side so you don't miss the thing in a moment. We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do custom t-shirts, racing. We'll do any, actually any shirt. We'll do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts. Uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner, personalized. I mean, it, we'll do anything. It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats. Uh, embroidered shirts, um, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so you just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you just race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit different. At least, um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors. Everything is hand drawn. I mean, everything. We don't Photoshop anything onto it, onto a shirt or anything like that. Everything that we we go through, everything is drawn, and which is the reason for the uh, art fees. Because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us, and um, you know, they're really good. So, so what we do is is on any any package that you do, we can we can mix and match. We can do any colors. You can do purple, red, blue, green, and do the rest black. It doesn't matter to us. Uh, with your design on there, we can do hoodies. We can do hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, tank tops. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do. And you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum you know, requirements. They can call us 318-278-7191 um, or they can email us at bulletprooftees.com yahoo.com or they can go to the website bulletproofteas.com back here at the martinsville speedway we are getting ready to go back to the restart here as this race is coming to an end what a wild one for sure as it has been all Right now, Joshua Altus, the man out in front. Still a lot of racing left to go. Back underway. The race continues. And 
Again, we watch them off turn four. Altus, Deweese, Tatum, Ely. Dukesbury, how about this one, Greg? Starting to climb back into the top five, getting around from his problems. Yeah, nice recovery for Stukesbury. Here in the number 19, trying to fight his way back up. But right now, his teammate Deweese trying to put the pressure on Altus and get the lead, and Braxton Deweese still searching for that first win. And I have a feeling it's coming here, Wesley. Sooner or later, Braxton Deweese is going to get that breakthrough. And could, night, could tonight be the night for the driver of the number 15 machine, by the way. We're on lap 175. Put up on 75 laps to go here. 250 laps the distance. 125 miles here at the Martinsville Speedway. They work their way off the corner. There goes Altus out in front. Deweese in second. Tatum third. Ely. Wingo. We mentioned there are now... Two drivers that have won races currently in the top five. Uh, 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 Altus, uh, Altus and Wingo first and fifth. And then you got guys like Deweese, Tatum, and Ely. They're hungry, looking for a win. And They've come very, is... very close, Greg. They just haven't been able to shut the door and seal it. Yeah, how close has Ely been this season in the number 54? Several times oh, yeah. this season oh, yeah. we've been talking about Ely having a shot at the victory. And unfortunately, it just doesn't go his way at the end. Here he is up in fourth again. A lot of damage on the 54, though. So it's been an, it's been an up and down ride for him in that blue and white number 54. Trying to fend off his teammate Tucker Wingo right now. Tyler Stooksbury behind him in the number 19. Pillsbury back up in the seventh after his issues earlier today. Jacob Grant. In the number five, nice recovery once again from him. Fernet up here. Spencer Harden in three laps down. Caleb Smith having uh, contact there with Jonathan Woods. I believe he may have caught the curb there. A save there after a wiggle and a giggle and a bobble and a jiggle for the 12. Gets up behind the 10 of Woods now for that spot. They work their way back out of turn four. There goes Coleman in our starburst. Candies, number 51. We like Starburst. We do. Yes, 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 yes. What's Tyler Stooksbury for position. Strawberry. In the chat. In the chat. What's your favorite Starburst? I'm the unpopular one. Well, I won't say the unpopular one, but I'm the unpopular opinion. I like the yellow ones, which makes me very popular because whenever Lemon. anyone... Ugh. Yeah, it makes me very popular because whenever ever anyone gets yellow Starburst, they're like, yeah, I don't want them. I'll take them. So they have someone to pawn and off on. In the chat, comment your favorite Starburst color for Evan Coleman. Strawberry. Strawberry. Strawberry, orange, berry, Cherry. or lemon. Cherry. Or, or is it another one? Is it Watermelon. one of special ones? And there's watermelon. There's grape. Like the yeah. all berry ones. The berry ones. Berry, 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 berry. Which one do you like, Charles? He likes strawberry. pink. <laughs> pink. Yeah, I told you strawberry. I told you. I said right, strawberry, so we know, too. We know what to get him. We need to get him the all pink ones. Pink. That, that's out now. <laughs> pink is my favorite Luis. color. <laughs> Luis in second. There's Tatum. Uh, sounds like lyrics to a song also. Sounds like we lost uh -huh. our minds up in here. Come on, it's the Aerosmith song, song. That's also up song. Up in lyrics. here, up in here. Ooh, uh, problems for Jacob Grant in the number five. Uh, Grant in the five having an issue as our producer gives us the exact lap that we lost. Our minds on as uh, the four of Massey going around. We have a bottleneck in turn oh, no. two and no caution. Oh. What are you talking about, Still man? No that's a caution. That's a big, that's a big pile there up over is. there. There's, There's the yellow the flag. Caution. What? I was gonna say, why world? would you not throw a yellow flag after that? That was just a, that was a, a, a virtual omelet mayhem of destruction, scattered, smothered, and covered moment right there. Hey, Waffle House. Look at this. All right, there's the four of Keenan Massey, up in front, right oh! there. Bing, bang, Massey boink. started it. Boink boink. Let's take another look because I'm going to quote my teammate Brock Denny here on this one. This, uh, so he was telling us about an issue with his wheel, and I'm going to use his exact quote here uh, because I believe it fits. D. Massey's going to come in the four on the outside, and then to quote my teammate Brock Denny with his wheel issues, the thing turns all the way to the left, 
And then it just goes boink, 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 boink. But he got contact with Peterson, yeah, Peterson in the 96. Yeah, I don't think a steering wheel fell off. I'm sorry. No, not a steering wheel problem, but that was Brock Denny describing his steering wheel problems to us. Hey, we got cars on pit road, including our top two, Altus and Deweys. Move Caleb Smith up into the lead as Ross Tatum in third also comes down pit road. So most of our drivers near the front coming down pit road on this one. The people said yellow is the best. Pink is the best. I like pink too. Yes, orange. Yellow, yellow and orange. Yellow and orange. Seeing that one. Yeah, that's a good point. Our producer says he doesn't like the color yellow because we've seen it about 25 times here tonight. In, Banana. Uh, Banana, Republic. Banana Republic. Banana you know, Republic hey. flag. Hey, maybe, <laughs> maybe they make a banana starburst sometime down the road. That'd be uh, yeah. uh, interesting. What you don't like? You talk about Banana Republic all the time. You don't even like bananas? Hell no! I hate bananas. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's a texture thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't like them. Potassium. I get potassium by drinking orange juice. And that works too. And I like V8 as well. You like V8? I've been doing V8 energy drinks lately. Does do that? Yeah. Or does that count? No, that's killing yourself. You need V8, like, V8 not, tomato juice, hot and spicy tomato juice. The fruit juice tomato, is actually that pretty good. To, that's what it is. It's a fruit juice made out of green tea. The hot and spicy is just tomato juice with, like, Tabasco in it or something. We like it. I can handle that. Anything else spicy, I end up in the hospital. Let me tell you a story of a... Uh, Remind me to tell you a story as our producer is giving Wesley a hard time about something that happened in Ezra's, the Ezra Pro Series on. The chair Monday. broke, okay? I fell out of the chair in the broadcast booth. That's a, yeah, hey. It's not remind funny. Me to remind me to tell you a story. So if you don't like spicy food, remind me after the race to tell you a story about a, a Buffalo Wild Wings, spicy wings, rotten milk related incident. It was Why a bad hell? experience. Why Lights out on the pace car. Why would you drink rotten milk? I mean, seriously. It, um, let's just say I didn't realize it until it was already three gulps down. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, if we get another caution, which I'm sure we will, I'll tell you the story. Because it was bad decision making from the beginning of the night. No alcohol was involved either, so you can Let's get uh, ready for another caution so right we can now. hear the story. Yeah, Coming up soon, story time with Greg. Here we you go, watch. back for the We're restart. Gonna, you watch. We're going to go 68 laps to the finish here now that we've said, okay, we got a story. Green flag caution, is caution, out caution, in the air. Braxton DeWeese in the 15 to the inside of Packard. And look at DeWeese able to get around Coleman as well in the number 51. And there we go. Contact. Peterson going around. Caution! Caution is out. Story time on deck. Peterson, Peterson, Helms, and uh, Duncan. A whole bunch of cars involved there. All right, they're wearing the yellow flag. All right, here we go. 96 back there outside row number two. Now, first off, watch what the 15 does. He's able to go from fifth to second here before they even come off turn two. Great job here by DeWeese. Yeah, that was but good. Let's that was see. good. Oh, oh, no. Just a little oh, contact Tatum. with Peterson and Tatum. Yeah, Tatum got into Peterson. Scrambles. All right, story time with Greg. Greg, tell the story. All right, so back, uh, uh, this must have been, this must have been 2013, 2014 or so. Buffalo Wild Wings has this thing. I'm sure if you've been to Buffalo Wild Wings, you've heard of this thing called the Blazing Challenge, where you have six minutes to eat 12 of the Blazing Wings, the hottest wings on the menu at the time, because now they got the Carolina Reaper wings. They're hotter. Whatever. So yeah, I don't do that me stuff. and me and the coworker decided one day, you know what? Let's have some friends meet us at Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's do this. Let's take the challenge. Pit stops on the uh, way. We don't by care about no, pit stops. Come on, tell out. us what happened. Go ahead. Everyone stay out. So we take the <laughs> challenge. We both fail. We run out of time. Like we both fail. We run out of time. I got seven and a half of the twelve wings in the six minutes. You have to average two wings a minute here, and I'm just not a fast eater. I just wanted to see how it handled. So. Whether you win or lose, they give you a big glass of milk after the uh, after the challenge. So I'm like, okay, cool, milk, big gulp. Something's wrong. Second big gulp. This doesn't taste right. Gulp. Oh, I see what's going on. It was expired. 
<laughs> needless to say, needless to say, that oh! one was free. <laughs> I was like, you tried to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I, you're you're lact you're not lactose intolerant, Greg. That would have been bad. No, my best <laughs> friend would've... is my best right. friend is lactose intolerant, so I give him a hard time about it oh. every once in a while. But uh, oh. now no. you wonder why I don't drink milk that much. Oh my god! Ugh. Oh my oh, god! It was, bad, it was a bad experience. And yeah, Eric, uh, I did the challenge. Uh, <laughs> didn't kill me, but sure felt like it for about. So what an did hour it taste like? That. What did that what did that sour milk taste like going down in your mouth and your your tongue and your and your stomach and all that what did it feel like it was your stomach churn uh yeah all yeah. the above I, we just got word that apparently <laughs> got, just got word that apparently will duvall has beat the uh blaze challenge in he's lying the Wild Wings. he's lying don't let him fool you <laughs> oh, our producer! <laughs> oh man, our producer's going. Oh, <laughs> here, so carpenter, help. cut his thumb off. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> and blazing challenge champion. Lights are out on the pace car. The one Caleb thumb wonder is a blazing challenge champion, though. I'll tell you what, he he can cut yeah, his finger off, but he won't cut his tongue off. You know. <laughs> it was like, got the T-shirt. Been there, done that. Got the T-shirt, and I will never do that again. Yeah, stay away from sour in. milk. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The old cliche, the, the old cliche, don't cry over sour milk is false until you drink it. <laughs> Back to green here in Martinsville. Closing in on. Oh, Dewey's got the wall. Fifty Dewey's laps got the to wall go. Restart. Oh, no. to go. And Dewey's just scraped the wall. Remember, he's already used the fast repair in the 15, but he's going after. For the lead. Nick in the number 12. Oh, 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 but he backs oh. out of it. But Smith pushes up the track. This could be the opening that Deweese needs. He's got a new leader. Braxton Deweese. He'll Leads stand on it. 51 to go. He'll stand on it out of turn four. New leader. Braxton Deweese to the number 15. And look at Smith, man. He has fell all the way back almost to... Wow. Fifth, sixth, I think. Altus, Wingo, Tatum. Ely, they're all passing him. Altus up to second here in the number 94. I believe they pitted on the same pit stop. So, Deweese has finally gotten in front of Altus. So, they did. can Deweese yep. hold them off? 50 laps to go here at Martinsville. 50 top laps six. to go here. Yep. I mean, the top six all have 12 laps on the stint. Caleb Smith has not with them so he's got another set of tires at the ready he's there's away. Coleman and Coleman and Woods battling here they come Starburst and Miller Light hey, Starburst and Miller Light that's Ranger quite the combination him. whoa Gardner. Packard was that Packard sliding behind him yeah he made the save got passed by Helms but Packard with a big slide and a big save up there in turn number two Massey getting around now. Here comes Jacob Grant inside as well. Grant, what a heartbreak he had here tonight, Wesley, because he had such a strong run going, but incidents have mired him deep the field in this one. Packard's having issues. Packard's stuck on the outside right now. The tires might be shot on the 24 car. He needs one more visit from the Banana Republic flag to be able to come down and take tires. Braxton DeWeese about six tenths of a second ahead of Altus now. And they work their way back around. And the turn number one and two to the back straight away. Could tonight be the night for Braxton DeWeese? The driver, the number 15 from Milliburg, Ohio. Will he finally break through and win for the Navy? For his grandfather. He is not in front. Altus in second. Tatum third. One of three Navy cars in the field here in this one. Night. 45, make it 44 laps to go. Deweese, one of the three drivers representing the Navy here tonight, and the only one that was not caught up in that skirmish earlier today. So his unit kind of just watching everything unfold from a distance as the caution falls once again Guys, here at got Martinsville. A, got another trivia question for you. Who is the all time winner of the most runs at Martinsville? Do you know it? I know it. Richard Petty. Ah. How yeah, many? That, I don't know. 15? I think it, I think it's thirteen. 
Jacob Grant and Keenan Massey getting together. That's what caused the caution there. You saw that on the swag replay. And he hit the incident limit. Jacob Grant done for the night. He has hit the incident limit. We touched on that a little bit there, Wesley, about the incident yeah. limit. If yes, you, you did. Too many of them. You're and out. And you're out. And unfortunately, that happened to Jacob Grant. Tough break for Pillsbury. caution here for the 87,000th time. Braxton Deweese, Josh Altus, Ross Tatum, Tucker Wingo. Has anyone in the chat been keeping track of how many cautions we've had? Because we've lost count here in this one. And, and by the way, I think I said it was his grandfather. He's actually honoring his uncle, Matt Deweese. My apologies on that. So his uncle. <clears throat> for Richard Petty? 15 wins. Yeah, maybe hey, it's 15. That's right. Hey, Eric. And here's a bonus, bonus question. question. Will Wesley yeah. succeed as a comedian? Oh, I don't know. I never, never tried about, never tried to be a comedian. Si, senor. You know, I, I was always told as a young kid, Greg, that if I did not make it as a race announcer, I'd probably be a pretty good comedian. And I've actually been told that too. And here's what I'm thinking: between you and I, we've got quite a few traveling road stories of oh, yeah. weird stuff that's happened. I mean, before the race, during commercials, and under cautions and stuff, and even under cautions, we tell stories about stuff that's happened to us in the past. And I swear, someone in the comment earlier asked, "Where do you guys come up with some of the stuff that we are?" Uh, you can't make these stories. this up. You can't yeah, make this stuff yeah. up. <laughs> this is all true stuff. These stories that we tell that has happened to us, these are all true stories. And they always say, you know, Jeff Foxworthy said, that, you know, the best comedians are the comedians that don't make stuff up. The best comedians are the ones that just tell true stories. So That's I, right. think, I think people who travel around like you and I, we I'm going to write a book lucky. one day. I am too. We're tra We're lucky enough to travel around. <laughs> I do know how to read and write. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I come so close to saying it, off. but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but to come so far, but yeah, so <laughs> the best way to have funny stories is to just have these things that happen to you. So yeah, I think Wesley and I. You know, I don't think I'm as funny, but I think we could both make it here as comedians, just going around telling stories of what happens to us when we travel the country for racing. Oh, I have to, I had to resert myself. <laughs> I, had to, I had to reset myself for I said something I shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, wouldn't have been the first time. Sorry, bud. Had to take it. Had to poke fun at that one. Green You're flag. great, buddy. We are all Green the people, all the, the veterans. His Luis. great grandfather has been in the military. He's leading the way, and yeah, we are we are having a blast up here in the tower. But do not let this negate you from the purpose of tonight's race, the Veterans Day 250. This race right. is in honor of all the men and women who have served this great country over the course of. We're just having fun. We're just yeah. having fun, and I think that's exactly what they've left for us to do. Because if you're not having fun, why in the hell are you doing it? And Josh Altus is paying tribute to the Marines. The Marines just turned 250 years old just a couple of days ago. So wow. he's hoping not only for the Veterans Day victory, he's also hoping to give the Marine Corps a birthday gift. Today. 250 laps as well. If he gets it caution's done. Out. Oh, caution's that out again. Was, was that the 16th caution? 17? 17. Here in the previous one was 16. This one for Caleb, Caleb Smith, Smith is around. 17. Caleb Smith oh around 17. Boy, how poetic would that be if Altus could get the win for the Marine Corps? Just two days after the 250th birthday in a 250-lap race. We'll have to see if he can do it here. Let's take a look at what happened to Smith in the Nintendo car. Has to check up there for Helms. Another Marine Corps car, and bink, right into the wheel and sign. Oh, well. <laughs> I was taking a sip of drink. 
Two more drivers have officially retired from the race here on this one. Is our producer <laughs> again asking Wesley what's going on? Uh, Tyler I didn't fall out of my chair. Jake... Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Tyler Sweetsbury and Jacob Grant uh, both retired from the race. Hey, we got a caution. Wesley, go ahead and tell your side of the story because you told us the side of the story. Me and Charles in the booth that night in the Ezra Pro race, but we can hear out. you tell. We can hear you telling your side of the story because we were laughing too hard. Tell the folks at home what we're talking about here. I'm calling the race with you, and all of a sudden I heard kaboom, and the chair broke, and I fell and hit the floor, and I hit the floor so hard I lifted the chair and it fell on my leg. <laughs> now I was I was wibble wobble Wesley Outland for the night. Seriously, <laughs> <I was> now <laughs> now you're missing the best part. We had to cut to commercial because <laughs> you were in a hotel room, right? You still are in this hotel room, right? Yes. That yeah, I'm still happened. here. I leave tomorrow now, to go to Atlanta. It was, it was <laughs> so, yeah, we have to cut to commercial in the Ezra Pro Race because we're laughing so hard because room service is bringing Wesley a new chair, and we can hear him in the background telling the people what happened on air. We're laughing so hard. We have no choice. We had to cut to commercial on that one. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot to cut my mic off. Oh, wow. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, then you hear the door knocking. You hear the chair getting yep. dropped off. And, you You're know. lucky we were on commercial when you were on the phone with room service because oh. me and Charles almost fell out of our chairs. We were laughing too hard. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Again. Oh wow. Well. Again. All these stories we tell are true stories, folks. <laughs> if you want proof, go back through the archives, pick pull up Monday night's Ezra Pro Series race. Where were we at? We were at We're at Richmond. We were at, no, that was last week. We were at um goodness, where were we? I am drawing a blink on where we were. We're at Vegas. Vegas, yes. Go back two days. Go to Monday. The Ezra Pro Series broadcast <laughs> at Las Vegas. 187 laps. And or better uh, yet. Or, or better yet, listen to the, the CRN audio yeah, call. And all of a sudden, too. you just hear these you hear these Ba-doom. sound effects with bings and bangs. And <laughs> it's a... <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about I it have, anymore. Let's I've drop never, for the pace car. <laughs> I have never... <laughs> Cut to commercial because I was laughing too hard until that day. Braxton Lee is going to lead them to green. Josh Altis in second. Ross Tatum back to third. We know how much speed the one car has here tonight, Wesley. He was the pole sitter in car number one. Has led the most laps here tonight. Probably been the fastest car in town. We'll see if he can get up around Altis and Deweese. 30 laps to go. Here they come. Back to the Geico restart zone out of turn number four. Green back in the air. Altus trying to win for his uncle. Final 30 circuits. Can he hold him off? He's on the lead of the back straightaway. Altus trying to win for the 250th anniversary of the Marines. He is in second. And then you got the USA Coca-Cola. USA Coke. They go good together. Oh, glory. In the one. He's in third. By the way, Tucker Wingo is up to fourth in the number 99, the New Hampshire winner. He's coming up here to try to steal it with his teammates. Co or Jack Ely and Cody Fournette both behind him, but Gardner coming back up after using a fast repair. We haven't mentioned Matthew Gilliams a whole lot. Talked about his paint scheme here tonight in the 28th. Darlington winner last week. He's up in the top 10. By, by the way, I mean Coca-Cola, not Coke, okay? In the one car. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go there. Here comes Robbie Helms on pit road. Oh, we're under 30 to go. Can we take this one to the finish? Can we bring this one on home for supper or a midnight snack or something? It's Helms 11 o'clock. Helms on pit road. Tatum is coming after Tucker, or excuse me, Josh Altus in the 94. We're going to have a battle for a second. And that is exactly what Braxton yeah. DeWeese wants to see in the number 15. He wants to see these guys start battling it out because he wants to be able to put some distance between himself. These laps click away when they're green. Yes. Got to see if he can see pull away more. from them. Going to be 25 laps to go for the 15. When they All right, come here's back. the final question. 2012 race at Martinsville. Jimmy Johnson, who recently retired, so did Clint Boyer, and also Jeff Gordon collide, allowing this driver to win. Who was I it? it? I know it. Who was Ryan it? Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman. 
And here's a bonus question. The Rocket question. Man, Ryan Newman. He won it. Yep. Here's a bonus question on top of that because this has always stood out to me. Who finished second in that one? It's his, it was at the time his best career cup finish. As Altus goes to battle in the number 15 of the week. Best career Altus finish. Has caught up at well, the time. See. He has won a race since then. As... DeWeese continues well, it wasn't to, pull, Kyle try Bush. to pull away. No, it was not no, Kyle Busch. It was a Bush. yellow car. It was a yellow car, but it was Joey not Logano. Kyle Busch. Nope. Nope. It was the car that Joey Logano drives now, but that was not who was driving it at the time. Sam Hornish Jr. No. He drove the car that just in me. Yeah, but it was not him that night. Tatum to the inside of Altus for a second. You get one more shot, then I'm going to have to have I to don't care. Who was it? A.J. Allmendinger. Oh, J.J. Allmendinger. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that's true. He, he drove the Penske car for half the season before some he unfortunate did. circumstances. It didn't last very uh, long. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some unfortunate circumstances there. And he's always been one of the more popular drivers in the series. And it's so good to see him getting a shot again as the caution falls for the 18th time here tonight. Good to see Dinger getting another shot with uh, Call of Gracing. Sounds like he may be going full-time next year as Gardner goes around in turn number three. Let's see what it was. He needs to stay out of the broadcast booth. <laughs> oh, let's see what happened. Well, there's the seven car, Christian Gardner, and there goes all oh, Fernet, just a little putting the pants at the wall. Okay, Fernet, you're guilty of that one. All right, everybody's <laughs> on pit road as well. Money, money stop, stop. Time, Wesley. Yeah, money stop. Ka -ching! Ka -ching! Oh, Ka -ching! Passion we stayed out. Racing your wow. Passion we stayed out. Oh, boy. Brockton Packer did not pit, neither did Caleb Smith, and neither did Zach Peterson. That's going to help DeWeese because now he's got a little bit of a buffer between himself and the cars that have come down. We'll see where the likes of Tatum, Altus, and company come out. You got guys that are in the top four that's got cars that look like they've been in a demolition derby and they still stay out there with 20 to go. Oh, Coleman took two tires, Wesley. Evan Coleman took two tires to see the race off pit road. Seven cars stayed out. Evan Coleman is going to come in, out in eighth after taking two tires. He's not playing with Atari. He's playing with Nintendo Power. <laughs> and so, is, so is Caleb Smith in the number 12 because he <laughs> is in a Nintendo car. Now I'm playing with power. <laughs> oh, God. I guess y'all don't remember that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Y'all make me feel old. Oh, okay. Braxton DeWeese, Brockton Packer, they're one and two. Caleb Smith, Zachary Peterson in fourth, and Evan Coleman, the top five. Look at the saw blade top five. We're going to take one more break. We're going to bring this one on home for supper here at Martinsville. Katie, bar the door. Braxton DeWeese trying to win for his uncle in the Navy. We'll be back. Motorsports throwing down the gauntlet to Deweese is a sitting duck. Greg, you believe it or not, 17. It'll be 16 when they go to the green Man. this time by at a four. I don't know. I think he's got enough of a cushion because we know how difficult it is to pass here at Martinsville. Here we go. Green flag. If this thing stays green, oh, good think restart. Deweese may have made a call. Ooh, good he restart. Makes it work. <laughs> Remember, good. Coleman's up there on two tires as well. Good restart. He better sling it and bring it. Back Altus straight away. Here Altus he comes. Coming, trying to follow suit with Coleman. 
Into number 51, Coleman the third, Altus Fired the fourth, traffic. Tatum the fifth. Oh, They're three wide, headway. contact, oh no! Ooh, they save it, no caution. Here comes Coleman to the inside now of Packer. All right, so the two tires have worked to get Coleman the second. Four tires on back from Altus, Tatum, and company. Yes, sir. Go. To the line. And they get around Deweese. Amp Motorsports said he thinks Deweese is a sitting duck. Amp Motorsports, of course, the car owner of Wingo, Ely, and Fernet. And Ely trying to make headway up through the field into number 54. Whoa, whoa. Fast repaired was just taken on Ely. He's got a fresh race car. Has Coleman to the inside of Deweese. And Altus is trying to look to get around Tatum. Uh, Tatum on the outside. This Coleman. is going to be Deweese's best friend right now as these guys battling behind him. You see this four-car battle for the lead? Deweese is in the battle. Here they come out of oh, the corner. Coleman. Oh, he got into him. Altus in the wall. No Altus caution. Altus the worst of it. That's going to no help caution. Deweese. That's going to help Deweese, but it's also going to help Tatum. Tatum on four fresh tires now. No pressure out the back for Tatum, so he can focus 100% on that number 15 car in front of him. Two drivers Boy. looking for their first victory. He's going to chop and block and do everything he can. Hustle and tussle to fight the one. The man that started from the pole, might I add. Here comes Deweese. He's out in front. Tatum is there. The Coca-Cola number one. He's got to use that bump and run. He's got to get a run on him. He can't get him there yet. He might have to move him out of the way. He's on the inside to the line. Ten to go here in Richmond, here in Barnesville. Had to check up. Had to check up. Ooh, almost gets in the back of Deweese. Pressure tires on the one car. He's got the position. He might get it there as the cone's flying on the back stretch. Someone wow. hit the cone and knocked it up into the track. The green cone caught the tack, and there it is. Ross Tatum gets around Braxton Deweese. Kind of got loose just a little bit. And Tatum gave him just a little bit of a tap, finished him off. And Tatum comes to the Coleman. lead with less than 10 to go. And here comes Coleman now to the number two spot. He'll close in behind the leader. But with that being said, Ross Tatum. The number one Coca-Cola entry. Here he comes. The man that won from the pole. Back in P1. Oh, Altus around. Trouble. Altus out. Well, this changes everything. Yellow flag flying. Eight lap shootout coming up and more. Look at the swag replay. What happened to Josh Altus here in the number 94. That's Ely behind him. Altus for MP Motorsports. Going after Deweese for third and just lost it. Oh, wow. Lost it on his own. Wall. Do you pit, Greg? Man. Do you pit? Does anybody come to the no. pits? No, you've made your bet at this point. There is not enough time here to make ground up. There's going to be less than five to go at Martinsville when we go green. You've made your bet. It is on from here. Can Braxton Luis get back up front and win this race? Have to see it. Can he get a good restart? It's all going to come down to what happens on this restart. He's going to line up, I believe, behind Ross Tatum. Evan Coleman, can the two-tire pit stop get him a top three here in this one? Or can he possibly steal it if something happens to Ross Tatum? Can the call work out? Jack Ely and Matt Gilliams up in the top five. Jack Peterson, the lucky dog, going to get his lap back. That'll put 14 cars on the lead lap. Oh, we've been on the air for over two hours. Yeah, we've been on the air for over two hours. And this this race uh, definitely has not disappointed. And it's share of yellow flags. If you're a fan, a fan of the yellow flag, then you have seen a lot of it. But uh, if not... This has been a uh, interesting show. And have Whatever we seen Charles the said. last one? Have we seen the Whatever. last yellow flag? <laughs> Charles, Charles says, says no. no. Our producer says no. We have not seen the end of the Banana Republic flag. <laughs> And we saw the Taco Bell dog get run over. Well, I'm sorry. It was the cold. <laughs> it was the... Hey, somebody's sending you a DM, Greg. Somebody's oh, getting me. a DM. That's all I heard. It was Danny. What me? Was not me. My notifications are silent. 
I know her as well. Charles, who be blowing you up, brother? Well. Who, someone, who be blowing you up? Who be trying to contact someone's you? Move, someone's lying here because we all three just said our notifications are on silent. And I'm telling you right now, that was not my notification bell. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking. So it went off on the other end. It's producer's fault. All I know is I heard something go, Daddy! Not me. I don't have anything that makes that sound. Who is it? It's the ghost. I have no new wait notifications. Minute, I am. Minute, wait a minute. Wait. See, it's you. It's you. You admit it. It's you. No, You're the guilty no, one. No. No. Oh, I had a theory, but it turned out I was wrong on that one. Thought we had Will Duvall in the booth with us as well a moment ago, but he's not either. Oh well, we had. enough to enough. Yep. Enough right, about the debate time. of sound Gonna be effects. Two to go, a natural green white checkered here, Wesley Tatum. We have Coleman, we have not Dewey. officially we have not officially passed over time yet. Nope. Here we this go. Is a natu this is a natural green white checkered, not considered overtime. That's right. We get a caution. So it's overtime yep. number one. Just so happened to fall on. Two to go as Tatum and the, here we go. We're gonna get it. Oh Tatum no! And Coleman get together. Excuse oh, me, Deweese Deweese and Coleman. Coleman. And we will have overtime. Oh no! It looks like somebody just turned the 15. Looks like Coleman just had enough of it. Deweese was fighting to get back to the lead, and this is for second. Take a look gotta at what see happened. If, you gotta see if Deweese slipped up and got into him. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, man, he tried to go for it to the outside. He got blocked. Pun it, Coleman. for the same real estate. I have to say, Greg, I do not blame, I, I don't blame Coleman at all. He was fighting for that position. Don't blame either driver there. That's fighting for the win right there. But you know it's Martinsville, and that's second place on the line. You know there's going to be some tempers in this one. And right, now we officially go into overtime. Overtime number one. We have passed the scheduled distance. This would have been lap 250. So oh, let's try this uh, one more time. The rules of overtime state. We'll do three attempts at a green-white checker. If the leader takes the, ca of the white flag before caution flag comes out, the race is considered official. Okay. If, if the leader takes the white flag, the race is considered official. If the leaders, and we have a caution before they take the white flag, we will freeze the field, we'll reset, we will go again. If it ends up being a third attempt, which I believe, Greg, it was New Hampshire, where we ended up having a three attempts at a green-white checker in overtime for this series. And boy, has this race mirrored what we saw in New Hampshire earlier today. Yes. Or earlier this year, I should say. I think we're close. I don't think we quite tied it yet, but I think it's still in the running. I think we're at 20 cautions now. New Hampshire had 23. 23 at New Hampshire. So yeah, I couldn't believe it. If we, if we max out, we're going to be one short. Yeah. Still not the most caution flags me and Greg Charles have ever announced. I think it was, hey, what was it, 32? It was 25, I think. And where was that race? Bristol. Here, 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 here. here. Martinsville. Oh, no, no, that that's the race that me and you did. I'm talking about the first race me and, me, and, uh, me, me and Charles did at Bristol. It was with the Adrenaline Series, I believe. Oh, I was not at that one, so yeah. Yeah, that's... That, I believe, was the all-time record. I was not at that one, but... What uh, was it, 32 cautions? Take Lights are out on the pace car, so let's try it out. Tatum, Coleman, Gilliams, your top three. Can <laughs> Gilliams get up and steal back-to-back -back <laughs> victories here in the 28? One at Darlington on a pit strategy call. Can he steal it at Martinsville tonight? <laughs> Our producer, our producer is hurt. Uh, never put gorilla tape on your beard. Here we go. Ready for the restart. Overtime oh, number no. one. Caution oh, no. comes out. Race is 
Not over. We go to overtime two. They take the white flag. Race is official. Tatum, Coleman. Ow! Oh, Ely got turned. Packer goes around. Overtime number Gosh, two yeah. coming up at Martinsville. And Ely hit the limit. Oh. Man, oh man, Jack Ely. Was it even his fault? <laughs> Watch this. Watch the restart. Going Look at this. The, going for the win here. Ely, Gilliams. Look! Look at! Look at our buddy there. Just got into him. The military man. Ooh, and Dewey's going around as well. Wow. And Dewey's had a shot to possibly try to climb back up there and try to pull an upset. That's a long shot now. Suddenly, we reset again for our second green white checkered. Oh. Second round of overtime. Overtime number two coming up. We did not complete the first one. Man, oh man. Martinsville, gentlemen. Welcome to Martinsville. Typical Martinsville. Am I right? Sure. Typical Martinsville. Just typical Martinsville. This is overtime number two. We'll try it again. So this is yellow flag number 21. Am I correct, Greg? Uh, yes. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I think it's the 21st caution. Because I remember we said that. Uh, I remember we said that we would be one shy of the record, and I think the sh the record was 23 at New Hampshire. Oh, oh no, no! Just got an update. That is not what happened to Jack Ely. He did not hit the incident limit. His connection dropped right at that caution. So that could have been bad if uh, that had happened and we stayed green because that contact didn't happen. His connection would have dropped right there. So he's still in the race. Uh, technically, if he can, if he could enter the session and get back out there, he would be. But his connection dropping right there at the point of contact—that was weird. I've never seen it timed out to where it looks exactly like a incident count limit. But he's several laps down anyway. Like he's already like four laps That's, down. Uh, the moot point now for Elite laps down, but. All right, we're gonna try this one more time. Ross Tatum leads Evan Coleman in the Starburst colors. He's in second. Tucker Wingo, who won at Kansas, did it in third. Fourth is Cody Fournett. Fifth, Matthew Gilliams, who won last week. Joshua Altis, the Daytona winner, is sixth. Zach Peterson is eighth. Ninth is Keenan Massey. Caleb Smith, your top ten. People are saying in the chat box, Tucker Wingo in the catbird seat now for Banff Motorsports. Could it happen? Overtime, number two at Martinsville. They're inside the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air, and Tatum is gone. Need to get back to the line to make this an official race, and look at Tucker Wingo. He oh, won no. the last in. Oh, going around, Altus goes around in nine. Who was that? Was that Altus? Yes, it was. We're going to triple overtime. Final round of overtime. Altus in the 94. Altus just threw it and slung it in the corner, sling it and bring it and turn it around on him. It was a single car accident. A triple overtime coming up. Boy, oh boy. This will be the race. The next flag will end the race as all Look at that. just goes just full send. It. Yep, going full send and just back through it into the wall. Simply lost it on his own, the man out of our, in the native out of Virginia. By the way, this is a, a nice little battle of Virginia drivers, might I add, as uh, there is a nice little group of drivers that are from the Commonwealth, the Battle of the Commonwealth, we were calling it. As uh, drivers from Martinsville include Altus, Gilliams, Sherwood, Helms, Tatum, Woods, and Stone, all from Virginia. The 
coming up. Very nice contingency from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Which, by the way, just so happens to be where we are virtually here tonight, Wesley. Darlington last week saw Matthew Gilliams win. Again, we appreciate you joining us for the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Tonight is uh, the salute to the veterans. This race coming down to the wire here for the Thank You Veterans 250. Greg Rents, Wesley Outland, Charles Wooten still alive, though damaged by Gorilla Glue tape. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the uh, first time our producer has had a Gorilla Glue body part related incident here in the production booth. I still remember a night we were, I believe, doing the Northwest Cup Series. We he locked his cut to commercial, and as he's like, "We can't cut a commercial together. <laughs> we gotta cut. We gotta cut to commercial. My hands are glued together. Literally, he didn't take his feet and pound the keyboard." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, poor Charles. <laughs> he is enjoying the, the new headsets, though. The new Sennheiser headset. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, some guy gave him a headset. No, he bought it. <laughs> he yeah. bought it. I mean, he didn't get it. He bought it. <laughs> go on, go on. Uh, why didn't you go to the site that I told you about? They didn't have it? <laughs> All right, lights are out in the pace car. This is this it. is it. Wingo versus Tatum. Can Coleman steal it on two tires? Cody Furnett, Wingo's teammate, in the lineup directly behind him. You remember that '70s song? This is it. This is it. Make no mistake about it. This is it. You're under the gun. This is it. Final chance. Final chance. Final shot. In overtime. Tatum. Tatum, Wingo, here we come. Oh, Wingo going to back off. He did. He let Tatum have it. Here we go. Tatum looking back to for green. that first win. Wingo Remember, to we get a caution. To repeat. Whoa, I turned on. He held on. It's Wingo to the All inside. Right. Wingo gets the lead now. He got does him. Tatum return the favor? Oh, oh yes, he does. Oh, Wingo yes, he does. The wall. Evan Coleman, can he get it? Are you kidding me? CRN one to go. Race is official. One more lap. It's Tatum. He had to put a bump on Wingo. Wingo put a bumper on him. Final time, Greg. Here they come into turn number three. And here comes Colby with a shot in the corner. Coleman on two tires. No, it's going to be Tatum. Ross Can Tatum you say, holding on. Can you say five for five? Wow. Ross Tatum, his first career SNB Cup Series win. But I have a feeling the officials are going to discuss the finish. Keep your eye on it. We are not done just oh, yet. Come it's on. That, that was, it's that was racing, baby. guys. Come on. That, that was racing. Ross Tatum going to burn it down Man. in Martinsville. And uh, boy, oh boy, the fans are letting them know if they like it or they don't. I'm hearing a whole lot of mixed reaction for Ross Tatum in the number one there. It is on tonight, boy. Wow. Ross Tatum, they are. Winner. They are having a discussion in the chat box. They're having a discussion in the iRacing chat. Ooh, and stick around because we're going to get these interviews from these guys here in a minute. Joey Petrie says, cheap. Wow, what a race. You call that a bumper from Banff Motorsports? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. There are definitely a whole lot of discussions that are going to be going on here right now. But, Wesley, let's take a look at the unofficial results here tonight. From Martinsville, the Veterans Day 250. And the word is unofficial because that could possibly change. Ross Tatum is your winner. Second spot, Evan Coleman. Cody Furnett, what a run for him. He just keeps getting better. Third place for the number 14. Brockton Packard, all the problems he had in the 24. He'll come back and finish in fourth. Tucker Wingo, fifth. Matthew Gilliams, the Darlington winner, is sixth. Zach Peterson, seventh. Caleb Smith, eighth. Joshua Altus, ninth. Keenan Massey, your top ten. 
Braxton Deweese in the 15 after looking like he had a shot at the win once again. He's going to have to settle for an 11th place finish. Christian Gardner and Zach Duncan, the final two cars on the lead lap. Spencer Hardison, Jonathan Woods, Robbie Helms in 16th, Zachary Stone, Jack Ely, Jacob Grant, and Tyler Stooksbury, your top 20. And to run out the rest of the field, it includes Rob Sherwood, Cody Terry, Will Duvall, and Joey Beasley. When we come back, we're going to talk to the top three. We're going to get their take on it. Racing, cheap move, good, bad, the ugly. We're going to talk to them. It's all said and done. Ross Tatum, the fast qualifier, the winner. And now makes it five different winners for the SMB Cup Series here after he wins the Thank You Veterans 250 at Martinsville. Post race wrap up when we return. We'll talk to him in a minute. Back here at Martinsville, the s &B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters is in the books. We are ready now to talk to the top three. We will talk to Ross Tatum, who makes it the fifth different winner on the series when later on in a few moments. But first, let's talk to Cody Fournette. Cody in the 14. Bro, mad props for you, man. You are getting better and better and better. Third place on the podium tonight. How do you feel? Cody Fernet, do you have a copy? Can you hear me? There you go, buddy. Yeah. 
so yeah man hey look we finally put a good run together i mean we've been getting caught up and and wrecks and everything you know th through the first four weeks of the season um i mean who would think martinsville would be you know where you can finally stay clean make it to the end um i mean i'm just i'm just happy for all these guys on the 14 team uh Dottie's family market um baps racing enterprises you know just, just you know sticking with us and being able to be there for the end talk about just how crazy martinsville was tonight 21 cautions it was rough you know i hate that uh you know our teammates jack ely and, and tucker wingo you know they got caught up in some stuff there at the end and um i mean you you, you really had to scratch and claw all the way through you know to be there um I mean, trying to be patient is hard there. You know, everything's so close and so tight and narrow, but, you know, just trying to keep your nose clean and, and you know, try to try to cross all your T's and dot your I's, right? Cody Fernet again for BAPS Racing Enterprises, picking up third place. Uh, Cody, real quickly, thank your sponsors and good run tonight, man. You survive here at Martinsville. Yeah, hey, thank you, man. So, uh, of course, Dottie's Family Markets on the 14, Ford Mustang, uh, Babs Racing Enterprises. You know, uh, Mr. Berkheimer is the one that puts all this together for us. And, you know, just, just really happy to be a part of this team. Um, you know, the SB Cup Series, you know, they do a great job keeping the series going. Um, and LSR TV, you know, putting on this broadcast, everything, you know, is, is just really spot on. Um, you know, thank you to all the veterans and everybody out there for everything they've done, you know, over the years and what they still continue to do. So. Hey, man, for sure. Cody Fournette, a third-place finish, up 10 spots when the checkered flag falls here tonight to the Thank You Veterans 250. Runner-up in the race. We love Starburst. We love fruit. We love candy. It's Evan Coleman for CEM Motorsports. Evan, what's your take of the finish? Did you think you had a chance to run down Tatum to try to go for the win or even uh, even the, 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 the whole craziness that went on there, that last restart? What's your take of everything? Uh... I really actually stretched my neck out on tire strategy. I think I had two extra sets more than everybody on track. So that was kind of helpful. But the, that last restart, I mean, Ross was, you know, just juking me up on restarts. So I really couldn't get close to him. I mean, I mean, it's short track. So I would have, you know, put the bumper, but I don't like, you know, sending right. people off to the outside wall for a win. I just, I just, me and my memo, I don't like doing that. But, you know, it was a good race. I mean, I, it was, different in a sense like because like this one is not like i had like i didn't have shane tonight i didn't have my crew chief telling me what to do so all this was like you know just spot on i was just you know trying to think what he would do and you know it got me second i started to notice that all the races that are hectic i finished good in so i, I might need more of that was there ever a time you thought about maybe trying to take advantage of the bump and run or the pass that uh, tatum did to wingo to try to allow you to try to pull an upset to get a victory yeah i did i thought when they were you know doing that initial battle when they were going back and forth with giving each other the bump i really thought they were gonna mess each other up so much that i wouldn't even have to you know touch anybody i would just you know so you know sail right on past them but uh that didn't happen i was still like a tenth or two back and you know i had to make up some ground and i was on and my car was already loose as it was so i couldn't really do too much all right buddy well man uh this is probably one of your best finishes of the season or of the series. Uh, Runner-up spot here tonight at Martinsville. Yeah, it is. All right. You got anybody you want to thank on the uh, number 51 car? Uh, Malik Ray for letting me use his paint schemes. It's always nice to have a, a Coke eSports driver, you know, just letting you just use his paint schemes all willy-nilly like this. And thankfully, I've been able to finish well in them, so you can't yell at me for that. Uh, all the guys that's... Uh, you know, CEM, you know, my boy Matt tell me, you know, what to do and what not to do. Caleb, you know, to keep the race going. And Spency, me boy, you know, to keep the short track racing skill alive. You know, he couldn't really do well in the race because he had, you know, trouble in the race. But, you know, everybody that's a part of this, even the s &B guys, even though some guys may not have best races that they want, you know, it's still a lot of good fun. You know, I have fun with it. I try to make it as fun as positive as I possibly can. But I'm just getting ready for next week. It's a road course. I got a good chance at that, and I'm just going to get ready. All right, buddy. Well, thank you very much. Again, that's uh, Ross Tatum, again, picking up the win. But right now, Evan Coleman, the runner-up, closest win, best win right now for the CEM Motorsports driver, the number 51 machine. Last but not least, Victory Lane, five different winners in five races. 
from the poll, the Coca-Cola number one USA Old Glory Colors of Ross Tatum. Ross, congratulations. Ross the boss, you get it done, and you are now the fifth different winner of the S&B Cup Series. Talk about the race, especially triple overtime and having to get around Wingo to get that victory. Man, that race was uh, stressful. Um, but, yeah, I managed to keep my car clean basically the first 190 laps. And then, uh, yeah, that last move there at the end might have been uh, a little aggressive by me. But, you know, I saw everyone else pushing people around all race. So I figured I'd do one myself. Plus, Tucker's won a race already. So, you know, I thought it was my turn, I guess. That's a pretty bold statement, bud. Uh, man, talk about just this craziness here tonight. Uh, over 20-plus caution flags. And uh, as you said, sometimes you got to use the bumper to move some people uh, out of the way. You did that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems like a lot of people are doing that. Um, you know, Martinsville's a different type of track. And I feel like a lot of people on iRacing in particular kind of drive it wrong they don't really try to set up passes they just kind of dive down in the corner under someone and i felt like that happened a lot today but um yeah so there at the end i pretty much just did what everyone else was doing but you know i didn't want to lose the race on the third green white checker because uh of you know getting bumped out of the way so just did it myself what does it mean to you to be the fifth different winner on the S and B Cup series, it seems like it's very competitive. Well, it feels good, you know. I can't, I can't win a league race to save my life. I think you've, or one of y'all have called some of my races where I finish second every single week. It seems like so. Right, right. It feels good, but um, hopefully, I'm be the first to be with two wins. So we'll see. I think Dover's next week, so that'll be interesting. Hopefully, it'll be a cleaner race and a lot more green flag runs. All right, buddy. Congratulations to you. Before we let you go, thank your sponsors on the number one machine from the poll. Uh, like thank Coca Cola for paying the bills, like always, and uh, Avalanche and Holler Hunters for putting on the league. They're a really great partner, and uh, you guys for broadcasting the race. It's always a lot of fun to go back and watch it. And uh, Zach Stone for making my paint schemes. He does an awesome job. Everybody should check him out on trading paints. And uh, Jonathan Woods also for uh, giving me some uh, tips there at the end of the race. All right, when it's all said and done, again, Ross Tatum picking up the win. Fifth different winner in five races for the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler. Eight wins tonight in the Thank You Veterans for the Veterans 250. Well, some people are saying it's the road course. Ross Tatum says it's Dover. The Monster Mile. Miles the Monster will host the SMB Cup Series for round number six. Next Wednesday night, we go live at... 9 p.m. Eastern Time on LSR TV and again, congratulations to Ross Tatum for picking up the victory. He becomes now the fifth different winner on the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. We'll call it a night here at Martinsville. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Veterans Day to all of our men and women that have fought and died and perished for us to have the freedoms to enjoy what we do today as Americans, whether it be enjoying the world of esports or whatever we do in our day-to-day -day lives. Tomorrow night, it is 11.45 Eastern, 10.45 Central. The next round, just around this time, will be live on LSR TV and CRN Sports for the final round of the round of 12 to advance to the round of 8. For the West Bay Nap Auto Parts playoffs for the trucks. And it will be at Charlotte. For executive producer Charles Wooten, for Greg Rance, I'm Wesley Outland. Happy Veterans Day. Please keep on praying for our country. And congratulations to Ross Tatum. He wins at the short track, Martinsville Speedway, for the SB Cup Series. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of 52 Media LLC and iRacing.com Motorsports Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your.